Hello, everybody, and welcome to the inventory. I'm your host, uh... Oh, fuck. I'm not a detective anymore. <laughs> I'm your host, Joe, also known as Rinka Best Girl. And with me today, I have my co-host, as usual, Spanana. Why don't you say hello? Sure, you're not going to just uh, do a retake on that? Can we? No. It's funny. Damn it. All right. Spanana, say hello. Do I? I mean, that was kind of my intro. Just, just ribbing you once again. All righty. Uh, with us today, we have a returning guest. And why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Pivotal Cog. I'm a game mod, and I'm also the guy who made Mia, Palutena, Pit, Mahiru, Coco, and Lara Show. And we have a brand new guest. Uh, coming on for the first time, uh, relatively new creator. Why don't you introduce yourself? What's up, guys? I'm Floor. Um, I was going to do the writing for Lucina, but she was already in the game, so I decided to go with the next best girl, Thara, uh, also known as Tharja, if you want to be precise. And then I did the writing for her, then Metal Etar did the posing for her and the artwork. All righty. With introductions out of the way, Let's get on to changes to the game. Uh, last episode, we didn't get around to talking about it, but uh, this time we are. We're getting Mulan, who got a uh, quick pass with a brand new model by Beta69. Uh, Cog, why don't you set us off with your thoughts on that? I think it's a really well-done update. Like, in, my, in Mulan's original iteration, I didn't really very much because the art kind of put me off of her. But with this new one, it's both more accurate to the source while still being conventionally attractive. And I think I'll find myself playing with her a lot more. And I'm just really glad that Beta did her justice. And I'm excited to see what other remakes he'll have in the works coming up in the future. All righty. Floor, what about you? Oh, uh, this is my first time playing with her. I didn't play with her when she uh, had her old stuff going on, but I I liked her as the addition to the cast. Um, I think her artwork again, as he said, it looks really nice. Uh, the writing's pretty pretty well. As uh, the only th real complaint I had was, I think sometimes her dialogues are a little bit too lengthy, which is fine. Uh, feels a little bit hypocritical saying that since I wrote the lines for Thara. Uh, that's um, that's just N Masks writing style. Yeah. Yeah, um, just maybe include a few more that are a little bit shorter to the point. But overall, I thought it was really solid. All righty. Spanana, what about you? I, I was surprised to see this on on the agenda for the podcast. I swear, like, it, it had been longer since Mulan's uh, art got updated. Well, it... it was she it, on it, testing for a while? No, she got quick passed. Was she, oh, wow. She got quick passed, uh, oh, but... She, no, she didn't. Wait, no. You got re-sponsored. Oh, right, 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 right. You're explains. fucking with me. I'm sorry, I was misremembering. Sponsorship went up the same day as Palutena's. Right. Uh, she got added back to the main game on the day that we recorded the last episode. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is why we didn't go over it then. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like, I don't... Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't one of those people that was, like, super bothered or put off by her old model. But looking at the new one, like, yeah, like, I wouldn't want to go back. She, you know, just overall much more cohesive look. It uh, it captures um, sort of, like, the, the source's art style just a lot a lot better. So, yeah, she's uh, much easier to look at now. <laughs> uh, you could say in both, um, even even, like, the Ping outfit. So she's always fun to play with. Um, her dialogue's great. I'm glad that Namask keeps updating her. It's it's she seems like kind of like a like a dark horse character, you know, just kind of like this uh, one of the few Disney characters in like a a roster full of like anime girls. But yeah, he he keeps uh, adding new interesting mechanics to her. Kind of kind of feels like he's just uh, a little more free to just um, put whatever he wants on her and sort of try new things. Yeah, with her as a project. So I'm happy it's... to see that. It's not like he has to worry about something coming out and expanding the lore and making stuff hmm. no longer canon. Yeah, like Coco. I cry every time. <laughs> uh, apparently Coco is now a lesbian. 
I uh, I think that uh, it's really like Beta's got this uh, this strong talent for just going and reworking models constantly. Like he reworked the Saki model, and he's reworking the Saki model that he's reworked now. So uh, just the him constantly going back and. Uh, I believe that the way he describes it is necromancy. Uh, just doing that for old characters, touching them up in terms of models, and making them more up-to-date has been a really useful thing that's kind of not not really as appreciated as it should be. Like, I, I, I wish, wish that... people did it. Yeah, me too. I wish that more people would go and, like, uh, touch up some of the more dated models. Uh... And again, it's such a good way to get started. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good way to like practice Kisekai. So when you want to make your own original model, it's a good way to familiarize yourself with uh, working with other members of the community. It's a, and it's just a good way to like uh, get practice in general. Uh, so kudos to Beta, top lad. Uh, and then of course the writing is always on point when it's en masse. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, he does have a tendency to write his characters to go uh, a little rambly at times, but, like, I feel like for, at least for Mulan, it's kind of, for, like, Mulan and Fatala, it feels kind of fitting. Just because they're kind of, like, awkward as people. For sure. I mean, uh, against the character. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know what you mean, though. Like, um... So, Yeah. Uh, solid writing is always from NMAS, and betas are updates are great. That's what I've got to say about Mulan. Alright, up next was a new character adding to testing uh, by uh, the, I believe it was Alpha, Alpha Man 21, adding Jesse from Honey Pup. Uh, Cog, why don't you start us out? I think Jesse was a huge surprise to pretty much everyone when she hit. And she hit pretty hard, I'd say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think she's up to, like, over 3,000 lines now, which is ridiculous for a new creator. I think the um, closest... It's ridiculous for anybody. Yeah. If only a handful of the total roster is over 3,000 lines. And even so, she does it pretty well. Like, she targets a lot. Her art's pretty good for the most part. Even the print on her shirt is pretty good. And I think she fills a pretty undertapped archetype for this type of game, which is the sort of moon style of hypersexual. And I think that when she gets complete, she'll fill a really good niche. I'm excited to see what Alpha Man has in store for her. All righty. Floor, what about you? Uh, I'm always a fan of the Honey Pop series. Uh, I was excited to see her come in. I love playing with her. Uh, dialogue I thought was great. Her art style is pretty great. Uh, if I had to pick any complaint, I think some of her poses could be a little bit more expressive. I saw her mouth states at the time, so it was kind of hard for me to fill in a voice for her when I didn't really know what her, mouth or, uh, her emotion would be until halfway through. But overall, I thought it was pretty well done. Just maybe uh, the facial expressions, I think. All righty. Got anything else to say? Uh, that's about it. All righty. I, I liked it overall. Uh, Spanana, what about you? Yeah, like, uh, she's got a super, a super strong start over our, uh, yeah, overall. Yeah. Uh, can't talk um with the 3,000 lines just coming out and they're you know they're not even all like generic lines she's if you look through her file she targets a lot of different situations so that's definitely good just just to be able to be that um that familiar with the game and sort of knowing ahead of time like having lurked you know like you know you kind of know all of the uh high profile stuff you got to target and she engaged with my characters which was always nice to see um Always, always makes me feel good inside. Uh, hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say she's like absolutely amazing. I think uh, she kind of reminds me of of Maya's debut a little bit, 
where, uh, you know, I threw out all these lines, especially a lot of targeted lines, but a lot of them, you know, they're, they're, it's a good start. It's just, I, I feel like some of her um, tone could be a little more um, emotional, emotional, you know, a little more emotive. Um, I think some of that just comes down to the style. Uh, she could use a lot more of like certain writing techniques that kind of give her a voice a little bit better and, and make it feel a little less robotic, like not don't have like little short choppy sentences that end with periods. You know, you want like italics and, and ellipses and basically stuff to show that they're either, either like thinking on the spot or, uh, dashes, you know, so stuff like that, stuff like they're putting emphasis on certain words. That's really the only thing. And, you know, like some of the posing too, just, uh, some of the faces don't translate quite as well as other ones and, and kind of make her just look a little too calm. But the, the overall premise, um, I really like, you know, people, I want to see some like more overtly like porny characters and, you know, former <laughs> porn star is basically the perfect place to do it. So yeah, I think she could definitely carve out a good niche for herself. And as long as, as long as you make that tone a little bit stronger, it should be good. I mean, you, uh, she's sharing a franchise with Q, so <laughs> you really do have to turn up the, uh, the voice and, and give her a really strong personality. Yeah, but, you know, it's a great it's a great start. So as long as he, he just uh, kind of polishes her, I think she'll turn out pretty good. Sharing a sharing a franchise with Q is some pretty big clown shoes to fill. And that Q is a very like popular character, despite her updates being few and far between. Um, however, with just the insane amount of effort already put into Jesse. Uh I feel like I'm not even like a little bit worried that it's not gonna that it's not gonna work out. Uh I feel I generally don't believe that it's a good idea to put a character on testing with that many lines just in case you do mess up. You don't want to go back and redo all those. Um I uh, I played her with Chiaki and Chihiro, and was surprised that he, she had a little bit to say about them, but it didn't feel like she had too much. And it made me wonder, like, how does she have that many lines? She only targeted these characters, like, once each. Uh, and so I'm, I, I get the feeling that she's got a lot of replay value across a bunch of different kinds of characters. Um, I should probably target her with my own characters and see if I can get them to respond, because I like what I've seen so far. I just probably want to see more. Which is probably mostly on me, because I only played her for a couple of games. Briefly. But, uh, yeah, I liked what I saw. Alright. Next question is... Er, yeah. Next character is... This one kind of came super out of nowhere. Uh, it was the Rarity Rework. Um, Cog, why don't you start us off with your thoughts on that? I'll admit I'm not the biggest Rarity fan when she first hit. Like, I don't even think I really targeted her with any of my characters. But I think her new iteration is a lot better. I'm not really sure what her changes are in dialogue were when I playtested her, but I felt like she was a lot more consistent in the games I played with her, and obviously her art was much better. Her anything Horse Cat does is always pretty good. And I think I like her gimmick a lot more now. Just a random outfit at the Star Beach game is a lot better than randomly swapping between outfits between stages, in my opinion. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a lot less, a lot less, uh, a lot less difficult to target. Right, right. So, so it's kind of like the the Vriska situation, right? Well, where she'll just like pick an outfit randomly and stick with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Vr Vriska didn't stick with it, did she? Well, it's kind of, it's like the same functionality though, right? Where she just has like a whole separate image set. Yeah. Well, but it doesn't that. break anything because you'd only see one outfit per game. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I understand what you mean. Yeah, it's that. All right. Uh, did you have more to say, Cog? 
that's pretty much all I had to say. Uh, I really like the update, and I hope it gets completed soon. All right. Floor, what about you? I completely agree with the uh, the gimmick change. I think having one outfit and sticking with it, you know, with that outfit training. Um, I like that idea better than the other one. Uh, I actually wrote a lot of uh, lines for her with Thara, and then after including about 20 of them, I realized I targeted the wrong rarity. So I kind of <laughs> have to go back on some of that. I mean, I'll keep it in, but it's, you know, it's all good. I'll have to write more then. Uh, overall, I thought the art style was good. Um, I'm not sure if I could say which one I prefer better. I think they're both pretty solid, but the new one has a better game. Alrighty. Banana, what about you? Well, the the dialogue for the new one is, is pretty much lifted straight from the old one, right? Uh, it, w- it has been a while since I played the old rarity. I, I think it is because she has like the exact same targeted lines to my my characters. I checked. So I think it's the same. So it's it's kind of like just a straight upgrade, almost like cam- almost like the cami situation. Um yeah. but yeah, I really like her. Um definitely just I mean, you can tell that this like it's the same artist as like Pinky and Twilight now. Just the style um is a lot more cohesive. Which is good for franchise mates. Um, yeah, her outfits look great. She looks really expressive. Uh, I like her poses. Yeah, nice body. I can see she's she's got like a the the prominent uh, camel toe groin lines, just like Nami has. So I guess that's going to be the new trend. Is 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 nice nice big pubic bones. Hey. What? Nothing. So yeah, dialogue's pretty much the same, but you know, never thought that was too bad. But just a just a much yeah more cohesive character still has the same uh, spirit of like a of a like a fashion like a fashionista style character, but you know not obnoxiously switching outfits all the time, which is just kind of weird, and you know forces people to target it. And you know we're we are we are pretty much two years removed from from when. Amy was shooting her clothes off and and lighting the world on fire here, and the and the the magics died. <laughs> so good to do something that's just uh, simple and sexy. So I'm happy to see that. Yeah, it's, as, it's... A, as a side note, her name is Rarity E G in the game files, which just makes me think of Zeromus E G from Final Fantasy IV Advance. I I can't stop thinking that. And uh, yeah, you posted that in her uh, dub channel. <laughs> But yeah, I like her. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot less uh, sporadic, I guess. Without the gimmick, it's it's like the the idea is still there, but it's just less. It, it's more cohesive, almost like uh, that. It's been changed to it's random at the start. Uh, I guess it's a good thing we moved to get good, but but also I think that uh, they were able to do that under the 11 megabyte limit. So I'm curious as to how many, or how they went about doing that. I haven't actually. I only ended up uh, playing her once and then starting a second game, so I'm not sure how many outfits she has. I think uh, she has three total. And about 300 images total in her folder. Jeez. Uh, that's an insanely impressive amount of work. Uh, I guess after doing the pinky pinkamina thing, uh, they've probably got a good idea on how to make that work. Uh, horse cat. Yeah, horse cat has. And uh, the guy he works with, uh, Tavi, they have a really great talent for just like, uh, kind of like going quiet for like a month or three, and then just like, oh yeah, here's this character that we've uh, completely reworked from the ground up, or here's this completely new character out of nowhere. 
and that's always a pleasant surprise seeing what they've uh, what they've been doing when, while we haven't heard from them for a while. Uh, I like the new rarity update a lot. Speaking of uh, Niels' as characters getting reworked, uh, Weiss Schnee has returned to testing. Uh, Cog, why don't you start us off? I like the new Weiss a lot. Like, obviously, her model is a lot better. Underscore did a great job with that. And in my playtest, I didn't really notice a lot of new dialogue. I think it was pretty much all lifted from the old one. So I'm hoping that gets attention in the future. But I think overall, yeah, I think it's a nice rework. The extra stage, I don't really think it was necessary per se, but I think it adds a bit more difficulty to her, which is hit or miss. But yeah. I like it overall, and hope it starts a trend of the Ruby Girls gang reworks and hopefully brought to standards with the rest of the roster. Same. I've wanted Ruby and Yang to be good for so many... for, for a year now. Only those two. Uh, Blake can come or go, and Weiss was never my favorite. For a long time, I think people considered Weiss to be the best one. Yeah, because she was the one that got updates that expanded her dialogue to target characters outside of just the other Ruby characters. Mm -hmm. I admire Niels' uh, dedication. Uh, Floor, what are your thoughts on Weiss? Uh, I'm in complete agreement. I really do enjoy seeing all the Ruby characters get reworks. Um, the better the Ruby characters are, the better the game is. Uh, I don't feel like any particular area of her is below average. I think everything is either average or above average. Uh, the posing's nice. I actually really do like the posing. Uh, you know, dialogue is safe but good. Um, I think her, ironically enough, her head side is proper proportions, but it's a little bit it's not the same proportions as the other characters in the cast. So her head does look a little bit too small, but I mean that it's fine. <laughs> that's just I, 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 it's, I can't stop paying attention to that. You got to smart the revolution that's, somewhere. That's the trend we're going in is, is pinheads. <laughs> I did it. Uh, Paula Tina did it. Everyone's, everyone's getting their mega mind syndrome cured. The epidemic <laughs> is over. The revolution begins somewhere. I mean, it's better proportions overall. We're just trying I mean, to get away is. from like Kisuke chibiness. Oh yeah, it's just it's the chibiness is what you're used to. Yeah, so it'll take getting used to it. But I mean, it's fine. There, there's nothing bad about it. Yeah, it's just a bit of growing pains. Eventually, the eventually there will be more and more <laughs> characters on the roster who are like that. All right, spin on. What about you? Uh, yeah. The, the new art wave is coming in. The new school. So, yeah. Um, again, pretty, sim pretty similar situation to Rarity. Same original author, Niels. It seems like her, her dialogue, again, was just lifted straight from the old Weiss. Um, with some more proofreading, which is good. But uh, still, you know, basically the same on that front. But it's, it's good to see her. Um, it's good to see an update. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see an update for one of the Ruby girls finally come to fruition ever since BB kind of left in the beginning of this year, they've just been sort of up for grabs and everybody's been kind of tossing around the idea of updating them all four of them. And they have, they have like new models in the works. Um, I've seen a lot of poses that un underscore is posted for uh, Ruby, but, uh, and, and Weiss was getting a lot of stuff too, but to, to see it finally come around, um, you know, bodes well that the others will eventually get um, the treatment that they deserve, too. So, yeah, happy to see it. And and like I said, just the, we're, we're moving into a, an era, a new school, a new art wave of different proportions. And um, it's, you know, it's really starting to grow on me, too. So I'm, I'm happy to see her, her herald that, herald the, the wave of updates in a few different ways. I agree. 
Uh, ever since Underscore made those Ruby models, uh, it felt like we needed them in the game yesterday. Uh, I, uh, I knew that Niels had been, uh, working on, uh, the Weiss update for, like, it feels like forever now, right? Like, I feel like he's been posting screenshots of that for a, for a while, and it's nice. Yes. Go on. I was just going to say it felt like half a year since he started posting that he's going to, like, update Weiss. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like it was, um, it was a long time coming, and I'm, uh, I'm really glad to see that she's uh, finally here. I'm uh, curious as to uh, how it's going to work with the other rubies when they finally get updated, because it feels like a lot of the... Uh... Oh, oh, Niels has always gone and kind of been updating Weiss a little at, at a time, so she's always kind of been like an outlier compared to the rest of her team. Uh, it feels like they're she could target the her the rest of her teammates in like situations when like say they're playing with Coco, like like a game with Ruby Weiss, Yang, and Coco. Weiss could talk about how it's everybody but uh, from Beacon except for Blake. She's not here. But, like, the other Ruby girls can't respond because nobody's working on them. So I imagine that that kind of thing where it's having those characters, they're, like, really familiar to her but aren't actively being worked on is going to make it uh, a little bit difficult. So I hope that the other... Uh, Ruby characters get picked up so you can have those more in-depth interactions. But uh, yeah, that new model is great. Underscore really knocked it out of the park. He's super good at making uh, making models. It feels like it's been forever since we've had one of his models in the game, and I'm glad to see it there. And the writing is... It, it, well, that's Weiss. It's, uh, it's definitely how I remember Weiss being, so... Great job on that, too. That's all the changes to the game and testing so far, which is really short compared to the last time where we spent a good half hour talking about Dragon Ball alone. Uh, so for now, we've got... I'm sorry, it's just My Little Pony just doesn't get me fired up as much. <laughs> That's fine. Uh... Now let's uh, let's go over the resort and give our thoughts because that's going to be wrapping up tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, if, if, you know it's it's this big it's this big four month wait to uh, decide all of our fates, and then it's just over in a week, like it never even happened. Yep. <laughs> um. So while we're here, let's give our thoughts and predictions on uh, who we think is going to rise, uh, who we think is going to. Maybe be kind of maybe give some of our unexpected or more out there takes. Actually, hold on. What I have here is oh. the, is the results up to today of oh yeah, you're a mod. What we have, I forgot. So, <laughs> so if it pleases the court, I'd like to give the results and get your reactions to them. Excuse me, Your Honor, but those resort results. Are out of date. This is not an updated Totsi report. Where you go, damn you, Edgeworth. All right, so uh, that joke didn't land. No, I I I appreciated it. <laughs> As did I. Uh, so uh, so Cog, I guess it's a little bit. You can't really uh. You can't really predict what's going on because you've got the uh oh one sec, my mouse is acting up. You've got some uh you've got the actual data, so you can't really predict what's going on. Well, I guess 
May no, yeah, today's the, the, the third poll has started. You pretty much know what's going down, huh? Uh, yeah. Have there uh, ever like, been any like Nathan can change, but changes? That that That's, light in a resource. The only thing that could really shake things up is whether or not the dev poll factors into it a bunch because the opinions between those and the casual polls is a lot. Really? You'll see a lot of... What's overlapping? Uh, no, he's saying that there's a, a difference between the dev polls and the, uh, the casual polls. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Uh, hold on. All right, so one thing that it is that certain characters do much better in the dev poll, particularly May, Rinka, Kamina, and Pit do much better in the dev poll compared to the casual poll. It's two of my characters. I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Could you could you repeat who it is? Uh, May, Rinka. Kamina and Pet. I see. This is mod abuse. Only one of those characters is made by a mod. You're a Discord mod. It's close enough. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I hope that it's not a. I hope that it's not just people like, oh, Johan's a cool guy. I'll vote for his characters. And, and instead of being, oh, Johan's character or Joe's characters are good, I'll vote for them. I feel that way a lot too. Don't worry. Um, in no, any case, if you want, I can read the current results as they are right now and see what you think of them. All right. I don't know. I kind of want some anticipation for when the full results come out. Well, All that's right, only uh, in like one day. So, can you can you give like some some vague hints on how it's going? It's been out on. By the time this episode goes up, the uh, results will probably already be out. I know. <laughs> it's just for my benefit. But uh, all right. You, you can read them. It's fine. Go for it. All right, this might take a while since there's 103 characters I'm listing. Oh, God, you're going to oh. in order. All of them. <laughs> I was not prepared for this. I can just list them one by one until you feel you need to stop me. All right. This is calculated scores or just votes? This is calculated, factoring in both the votes and the line counts. Oh, wow, we're getting a sneak peek. Okay, Gentleman's Oath, we can't let this leak once the episode's over. Yeah, keep it secret until the final results are out. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So I'm going to go from the bottom up. In the start, at the very bottom, we have Xander. No! The man, the myth, the legend. Bazinga. Following him, we have Beatrix. Oh, uh, well, you know, Beatrix hasn't been updated at all, so despite having an active author, so. Oh, by Alpha. All right, makes sense. Oh yeah, and, remember Alpha exists. No. And then we have Sonia. All right. I remember I literally waited for Alpha to be sponsored um, as character 99 so I could make a character 100. <laughs> Calculate. Wow. So we can, we can see which one has gotten more updates since. I miss user. Same. Oh, uh, yes. You, Floor, uh, uh, you've never met him, have you? He's no, the guy, I'm, he's, I'm, he's I'm the guy that did Len. Okay. He he did a lot of work in the early days, and he's kind of just uh, disappeared. Not shown up in a while. Not since April, I think. Poor guy. All right. All right, moving on. Next, we have Elaine. 
This is going to be a long list if we add commentary to all of these. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So you don't have to commentate on all of them. Just commentate on what you feel like. So after Elaine, we have Felicia. Then Misty. Mm -hmm. Reminder that Felicia is the most played character by a mile. Yeah. (laughs) She's that far down. Then we have Shigo. Really? I like her. She probably holds up the best out of Dilettante's characters. But yeah. I know she doesn't quite have a have a, have a real bodysuit, but you know, her, her angle's still pretty fun. She's just kinda like a card carrying villain. She takes um photos in an attempt to blackmail people. I like her. I think she's still good. Her, I mean her model could be a lot better, but all right. After her, we have Meg. I think all of I think all of Shigo's votes must be me. Probably. Then we have Marceline, followed by Buffy. Ironic. Dragging Xander up, if you can call that up. Then Ami. Kami. Ami. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's another character that doesn't get updated. Then Angie. Followed by Spooky. Tracer. Kyoko. Remember remember that Overwatch was a game? Wait, Kyoko's that low? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! I, I still respect Kyoko for actually... A, um, showing me that this game could have character moments. Yeah, I. Mm. I will always have a soft spot for, her, to contrast with the very hard, burned, blackened spots on her hands. Yeah, but that's weighing down my hair and Chiaki super hard. Clearly, you need to have Mahiru give uh, Kyoko a selfie. Maybe if I ever update Kyoko, I will. Just do it, dude. What are you waiting for? Waiting for my crave oh. spark, but I'll get to that I later. I have not played a Danganronpa game. However, I know that Kilko has a nice big fat ass. Yeah. Needs an ass pose. I will not edit that. Uh, actually, I can. I might be able to edit that in. Just do it. It's free real estate, man. I've seen less plays edit it or leave it in, so I'm sure it's fine. I anyway. mean, it's got like a towel around it, right? Yeah. yeah, they don't show anything explicit. At least on Kyoko. So, after Kyoko? After Kyoko is Velma. Held by those, May. Well, those guys on Fourth Seat Studios actually really liked. <laughs> yeah, I think that video actually boosted her performance in here. Really? Was she doing worse last time? I think so, yeah. I think she was... Near the bottom ten. Ooh. After her, we have May. Overwatch May. Okay, and, we have three characters overall that are just named May, and they're all spelled differently. And then Kim. And Black Canary. How is Kim doing better than Chico? Uh, probably star power. She goes like the, the sidekick to the main villain. Whatever. And Hermione. Ah, uh, yes. Remember when she was on the front page? That was a long time ago. I remember it, God damn it! After her, Francisca. And 9S. So Francisco's weighing down the the Ace Attorney girls. 9S deserves more. Does he? He's been abandoned. He He shouldn't have been. (laughs) To beat him, drag him up. 9S was great. The best near time out of character. It's a shame N-Mask was a... N-Mask was a thrown him to the wayside. Just give me one second. I'm going to turn on my lights. 
All right. All right. After her, we have Morgan. Did I miss anybody? Morgan. Okay. Then Faye. Then <laughs> Sam is. Metal Tar is great. I don't know why he just lets uh, Faye kind of rot like that. I still like yeah. her too. Maybe she's just not He's... as fun to work on. He said he'd do an not. update for her, but she wasn't voted very high in like his interest pool. So I think she does have a rework like down the line, but it's not a high priority. I like her. After her, we have Samus. Then Ayala. Videl. Videl is that far down? What place is this? This is place 76. Wow. I still like Videl. <laughs> All these, all these members of the old guard. Yep. I miss. And we them. have Joey. Ah, uh, I like Joey a lot, actually. Then Nagisa. So wow, Ayala and Joey are like pretty close to each other. Yeah. Then Jin. Oof. Poor, poor Jin. Recently abandoned by Zuja. Zeus should just update him. I don't think he knows World Trigger that much. I think he just was like, yeah, this guy's attractive. I'll make a model. <laughs> oh, well. Which is, a, which is a valid way of going about doing things. Well, you don't need to see a source to make a model. Although it helps on posing. After Jin, there's Mia. Oh, hey, that's not too bad for a character you you abandoned. That's not terrible. I'm satisfied with where she is. I still think she's hot. Then there's Launch. Then Diva. Oh, damn. So, so Cauliflow's beaten both of them. Yep. She is the new hotness. And who wants, who wants to bang those boring old humans? After lunch, there's Diva. Sitting there collecting dust. Yep. Better than Tracer and May, I guess. For sale, we remote never used. Then in 69th place, very important, nice. is Amy. Nice. nice. Yo, let's go, Amy. Then there's female Corin. The fact that the first Fire Emblem character is 68th is making me feel very optimistic about the Fire Emblem. I offered a Nessie uh, to do a female Corin model update in the same style as Franca's, and he said that he's not interested at the moment, but he might get back to me on it in the future. I don't see him post much anymore. It's mostly in the girls' Fortnite channel. That's it. Yeah. Or the league. We lost some boys. Can we can we take our fuck caps for respect? I'm not wearing a cap. Neither am I. Same. Or me. Alright, then I'm glad we've all got our caps off in respect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep moving then. Alright. Next is Sayaka. Then Moon. Ugh. If only Moon were 69th place. <laughs> uh, she's 66th place, which is also fitting. She she would have wanted it that way at 69th. Who wouldn't want to be 69th place? Like, because I mean, if if you're if you're gonna lose, you might as well lose style. Pretty much. All right. So after Moon, there's Blake, followed by Sola. So Ruby's doing all right for themselves, I guess. 
you know, for having not been updated in forever and being borderline broken sometimes. Yeah, but now the best one of them is back on testing, excluding Coco. But you know what I mean. Speaking of Ruby, next one is Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all pretty close to each other, aren't they? More or less. Then there's We Fit Trainer. Then Leggy. Is that far down? She usually gets like a ton of votes, doesn't she? Yeah, usually she's in the top half, but not this time, I guess. Oh, wow. Plummeted. After We Fit Trainer is Leggy. Then Oof. Lynn. Oof. Then Nehru. I thought, I thought Leggy would have done a bit better. Me too. So. I guess her niche just kind of turned uh, a few people away. Unfortunate. You just can't trust the furries to stick around for long. Next is Rainbow Mika. Yeah, and that's about what I expected. Then Jotaro. Then Nugi Chen. Really? That surprises me, actually. She got a huge popularity boost after the summer event. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, did she used to be a lot lower? Yeah. She used to be, like, in the bottom tier, basically. I, I just didn't see her beating out Jotaro. I think Noogie's problem is kind of just, like, she's a, she's a less well-known Zonton, basically. After her, we have Navi. Then Eni. Oh, wow. Dorian's girls back to back. That's a shame. Dorian's, Dorian is like fucking great work. I feel like those characters should be higher. Eni, Dorian Eni is. Herself. She's just like a Marine. She's just like a minor Ace Attorney character. Hey, I can appreciate taking a minor character from a, from a more well known series. Hey, she's and, she's fun to interact with. Uh, she's got a butt that just won't quit. I love the way she, I love the way she talks and like tries to act stupid and plays with her hat. Yeah, those characters are very underrated. Absolutely, they got fucking robbed. That makes me upset. He's I the really, guy that made. He's the guy that made all the pixel art avatars that you've seen. If if you go back and look at the podcast things, he's fucking a great dude. Yeah, it's good stuff. I really want to make a food bouquet from One Punch Man just so she can be like, "Hey, you want? Hey, Eni, you want to see some actual psychic powers?" <laughs> She's Eni's trying to like read cards or shit with her mind. <laughs> it's just like casually lifts like the entire table over to her. Right. Well, after her is where Whites would have been. Uh, just doesn't apply to her anymore. Yeah. Wait, so if Rarity and Weiss get sponsored, are they just completely new characters? Is it like Cammy? Yeah, basically. All right. That's intense. Then there's Saki. Hey, Beta. You did it. You're in the top half. You should be higher, but you're still in the top half. Is that the top half? It's barely above the top half. What place are we on now? 52. All right, we're getting there. Should be higher, though. We're getting the Followed star by, players. Followed by Yang. Then Sheena. Oh, like really? Sheena. Wait, Sheena that low? I kind of kind of thought she'd be doing better. That low. She's in the top half. But I, I, I don't know. I thought Sheena would be like in the top 30. The top half is going to be very surprising, I feel. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm actually kind of happy because not one of my characters been, has been listed so far. So, hey! Top 50%! We did it, Reddit. Good job. How do you feel? I'm feeling good so far. Let's see how let's see how good that good is though. Next the up Ryuji. is Ryuji. Ryuji's next. <laughs> uh, 
After him is Zizo. Is that how you say it? I have no idea, but that's just... There will, n- there will never be a pronunciation guide for that. That Spinati voice reel thing on the Discord where Andres just wants us to uh, put voice clips. It'd be nice if, if her game had a pronunciation guide for that. After her is Miko. Robbed. Well, she hey, top not- half. That's not bad. Yeah. Especially for having no tits and for some people thinking she's a boy. Followed by Lote. Okay, yeah. Then Gwen. All right. Lot got her uh, model updated, right? Yep. Between now and then. Very subtle one, but it was definitely there. Then Kamina. My boy, what place is that? 43rd? 44th. All right, that was a wild guess. I'll take 44th. That's not bad. I haven't, like, updated him since the Heroes update either. Next is Coco. Then Romilia. Elizabeth. Really? Remember when Elizabeth was like slam dunk guaranteed number one for a while? I mean, I guess if your creator goes missing. Yeah, just dies. Then that's what happens. She'll always do all right with herself with uh, 4,000 lines, but... All right. Next is Mulan. Wow. That new model did great for her, huh? Yeah, she, she really needed that facelift. It's interesting. She was she was down near the bottom. Last yeah. Time. Next is May in the Woods May. Good. That's pretty good. Deserved, even. Then Hanako. All right. I'll take that. Hanako's probably my character, the character I'm like the least confident in how I've written her, so top 40, I'll take that. How by streaming Chan? Ah, uh-huh, say yeah. Peter. I like say better. That doesn't surprise me. It's just a cutie. Yeah. After her is Chiaki. All right. This is just like the, the like the Joe block right here. It really is. Like... Because next is Rinka. <laughs> Not bad. All right. All right. Top 40 for most of my characters I'm okay with. Immediately after her is Katria. Oh. Yeah, Fire Emblem's doing really well. Is this the mm-hmm. Fire Emblem block now? Uh, sort of. I guess they've traded out uh, Mel Corrin for another girl. So they should perform pretty well. We'll get to her soon. The only character that we haven't gotten to yet is Florina, right? Uh, Florina and LaRochelle. Yeah. Well, after Katria is Caulifla. Nice. Congrats, Bowenander. She'll be putting Team Dragon Ball on her back. Mm Mm-hmm. Followed by Shimikaze. Gambate. Then say. Say it ain't so. Then Pinkie Pie. Really? Not a, not doing as good as Twilight? Nope. I really thought she'd be bit doing better. Then Jolene. Twilight's, Twilight's been around longer. Then Jolene. Then Amalia. Then Larshell. Then Twilight. Is that the last of the Fire Emblem characters? We still got Florina. Florina. Ooh. How could I forget? I can't believe Florina's doing the best out of all of them. I can. She's good. Yep. She and there's, is good. After Twilight, there's Raven. Ooh. And Haru. Ooh. Nice. That means and, Top is doing even better. Then Q. She should be. What number is this? This is 23. So we're almost the there. echelon now. Followed by Kami. Okay. Then Mahiru. Ooh. Hey! 
Now we're in the top 20. Okay. So next is Jury. Good. That's the, that's the best Street Fighter girl. Oh, that would be Chun Li. You're entitled to your opinion, even if it is basic and wrong. Listen, then, Chun Li has the same voice actress as Maya. All right, your cause is just. All right, after her, what you go? Still going strong. Imagine when that model update comes through. Yep. Halo made a great model. You're telling Ho me. Hopefully we can do her justice. Oh, fuck my mic. Then Marinette. You know, I think we've, we've just passed the era of, like, pretty good Kisuke models, like, almost one-to-one. -one. Now st shit like Ochako and Zonton is going to make it you have to be absolutely exactly one to one, and I'm gonna have to update my characters again. Well, given that we haven't listed any of your characters yet, I think you're fine for some time. I can't be left behind, Joe. Especially when my characters are from the future. All right. Next, we have Kazuna. Followed by Pitt. Ooh. Hey. Then Misato. Congrats, you know Black. I, I took a look at the play stats, like the hard play stats that, that Andres posted a couple months back. I was surprised to see that Misato was not in the top 45 there. Was that before or after the Eva got put on Netflix? I think it was after. Really? I could not believe that she is that low. Like, I I would pick her all the time. <laughs> She's popular. You were, gonna, you were gonna make her at one point. I was. I cannot believe that. Am I crazy? Did he just forget to put her on the list? I know all these Zoomers just like uh, Doki Doki Literature Club instead of... <laughs> uh, whatever, instead of Evangelion, but... As the new hot uh, anti-escapism waifu <laughs> franchise. Deconstruction. Yeah, where people just waifu the characters anyway. But I really thought she'd be more popular. I mean, she still gets votes, clearly. I Just just the hard play stats. I'm, you know what? I think it's because she doesn't have an epilogue anymore. Black, give her her epilogue back. Right, well, after her, we have Florina. What place is that? This is 14th. Okay. Oh. That's pretty strong. Oh. Good chilling for Fire Emblem. Followed oh, by Sayori. Really? Okay, yeah. That's here, the... comes Do here comes the Doki Doki train. Sayori being that high is perhaps the most shocking part. Well, you know, sometimes she just hangs from the ceiling. She's so high. Oof. <laughs> okay. That, that one was a little bit forced. You, you've done better. So of you. After her, we have Sakura. All right. That's that's a good performance to see. I really like Sakura. Hey. Followed by. That means I should really target her bit more. Yeah. You like the actual zombie stuff. After her is Palutena. Wow, that new model really did her. Yeah. A ton of favors, huh? Yep. What number I'm is really this now? That with how she turned out. This is number 11. Oh, man. All right, top 10. All right, I number like 10. So many left. <laughs> All right, number 10, Chun Li. She should be in the top 10. Anyone with Maya's voice should be. Oh, I think, I think Lot voice was, it has uh, that same voice actress, too. Interesting. Number, number nine. nine. Number nine is Revy. Hey. I vote for Revy, even though she's not a character that I... I think she's objectively well-made, but personally, she's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I agree with she'll that. She'll beat the shit out of you, just like Rinka. Yeah, but she smokes, and that's gross. 
Eighth place is Zone 10. Expected. So there you go. Next time you need to make a model, just message just message some Japanese guy on Twitter. Seventh place, Futaba. Nice. The one, the only. Best persona girl. Sixth place goes to Ryuko. Hey, well, it's not quite first, but I'll take it, especially for having not updated her at all. <laughs> Fifth place goes to Akko. Oh, oh damn! She's going to bring up uh, a lot, unless she's unless she makes page one. Well, fifth place is page. Oh. Fifth place is page one. Oh yeah, it is. These are calculated, right? But he hasn't uh, put the franchises together. I, I, I'll I, tell you the tentative page one after I get through these last ones. So fourth place is Monica. Right, and Monica cannot be on page one. Right. By mod fiat. Reverse mod abuse. <laughs> mod generosity. It's really just so um, idiots who think <laughs> don't immediately think that the game's all buggy. Yeah. Third place goes to Jura. Hey, hey. I cannot believe that, like, there are people who actually thought that nobody would say that Monica's bugs were were real weren't real bugs. You know what I mean? Like people be like, oh, nobody will think that. Like, really? Yeah. That's good. Second place. Second place goes to Natsuki. Not Natsuki has had Natsuki keeps improving. Like, I know she keeps getting more lines, but goddamn. Star power is real. A lot of lasting appeal. And I guess we all know who number one is then. Yep. First place goes to the one and only Maya. It's her. Maya Van Dredd. I want to I wanna kiss her. <laughs> Your cause is just. And and I want to put my hand on her butt. <laughs> and I do those things, but she isn't real. All right, that is quite the the resort. Well, hey, there's still yeah. another. Uh, there's still what? One more day. Yeah, yeah I think things are subject to change. I'm pretty happy with my character's placements, really. Yeah. So your tentative page one, your page one will, if it sticks to the same trend it is right now, page one will be Maya, Natsuki, Akko, Ryuko, and Pit. This is the first time a character ever, oh no, wait, did Amali ever get page one? She got page two. This is the first Sonic character I've ever helped make has reached page one. Feels good, man. Feels good. That took up quite a bit of time. So these are these yes. are calculated scores. These are calculated using the methodology we've used for the past two resources now. So yeah, like um well, since there's still like a day left, what are what are the margins there with like some of the uh, like Maya and Jura, for example, or, or Maya and Natsuki? Like how close are their scores? I didn't get the raw numbers, just the raw placements, so I can't really tell you. But anything at this point is subject to change. Mm -hmm. well, I was not expecting a sneak peek. And that certainly has been the longest uh, segment of the podcast so far. As someone with no skin in the game, I'd like to, uh, I hope everyone had fun. That is, that's the real lesson here. Hope everyone had fun. All right. People have been uh, focusing more on, on raw votes lately, so I'm interested to see um, if my character has improved in that aspect.
Uh, a, I don't know if it's like from better competition or, or whatever, but um, you know, Revy falling off page one. You know, that's a. I was I was hoping like her her read on epilogue would would kind of buoy her there a little bit. Ryuko still doing fine. I'm still happy to see May and Jura doing well. So they're Revy flipped, will so. likely be yeah. page two if it stands as is. Well, they're not really pages anymore. Yeah, more like rows. So I guess the effect there is lessened. All right. Uh, so I know that this isn't on the script because it kind of happened, uh, kind of happened, you know, today, uh, mere hours ago. Uh, but Viz is working on a new feature for the game that will allow you to submit a little bit of feedback on characters once the once the game is ended uh it's not gonna work for every character you need to opt into it so characters that have been abandoned or characters with creators or like mia uh or just characters with creators that don't want to opt into that they won't be able to do it but you can uh you will you'll be able to do that now uh you and some of them might even have a cute little message if you choose to leave feedback for them. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? I know it's kind of out of the blue. I think it's kind of a cool thing. I noticed it earlier, and I've already opted in. It's sort of like the feedback post banana back in June or July. And I think it'll be useful for gathering suggestions on directions to take your characters. Yeah, that, that reminds me. I, uh, I talked to Spanana a little bit about this. Uh, I've been thinking about doing something uh, about like, similar to what Yuri did with her old poll. I'm thinking about making a Google, Google poll thing where I ask people if they voted for a character, if they voted for a character in the past, if yes... But they didn't vote this time, what changed? If no, but they did vote this time, what changed? Uh, if they'll ever vote for a character, like, or if it's just not for them. Like, that kind of poll, and seeing how that works. I'm thinking of making that. It was nice to, for Yuri to run that poll, but she never published any results. All right. What the uh, fuck, Yuri? Make something. Floor, what are your thoughts on the uh, the, f the feedback feature? Um, I think there's there's nothing but good stuff to say about it. Um, any feedback people that are, have their characters in testing get is good feedback. Uh, I mean, there I can't really see a single downside. I'm looking forward to seeing what people submit. Uh, the only real thing I'm not looking forward to is uh, looking through some of the testing channels not going to name names but some people i can see take their uh bug fixes and bug reports a little bit too they get a little bit heated so i'm hoping that we don't you know doesn't fall into the wrong hands it is a little pointless getting emotional over those since the per other the submitter can't see them yeah can't see your response so cog what are your uh, upcoming projects so I've been in a bit of a creative slump lately. My current projects, like I'll I keep my current... back. Yeah, Palutena's back, and I don't have anyone on the testing tables now. Uh, I want to work on a new character, but I haven't quite decided who I want to go for yet. I still might want to do Setsuna from Pyramid Moon Fates and Uko Nijima from Persona 5 in the future. Another character that's kind of interesting is Alma from Valhalla. Mm. It's been a lot of interest from the social Discord server about me taking up work on her. And no, I like her character. I liked Valhalla. So I might go through with it. I've got a model. Yeah, and that's mostly just my regular updates to my current characters. All 
All righty. Okay, Floor, what about you? Uh, still putting some time into Thara. Um, she's almost at a thousand lines. Once she gets about a thousand lines, fix up some things, give her a, you know, a few tags and all that. Also going to be adding one, maybe two more poses, and I'm going to apply for sponsorship with her. Uh, Metal Etar, who's been doing some of the poses, he's done all the graphic stuff. He will have a surprise, supposedly. I'll keep it a surprise when she gets, uh, she applies for a sponsorship. So stay tuned for that. After Thara, maybe a winter costume for her, if we do a winter thing. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I can't do anything with uh, artwork, so honestly, it's hard for me to start projects. But if I can reach out to anyone, see if anyone wants to do any artwork for Thara's winter outfit, I'll be more than happy to look into that. I think Course Killers actually already made the winter outfit for Katria, so Katria, might well yeah. reach out to yeah. him. I, I saw that too, so uh, you know, I, it's been on my agenda to uh, reach out to him about that. And then, so, yeah. after Saryosha, any plans? Um, again, I can't do any of the artwork, so it's hard for me to start projects. If anyone is willing to work with me for, you know, maybe a little bit of posing and the model for either Shamir from Fire Emblem, uh, Morag from Xenoblade, oh. uh, a few of the other Fire Emblem characters like uh, Marissa from Fire Emblem, Ira, more than happy to do those as well. And then Hanit from Xeno, uh, not Xenoblade, Octopath. Any of those characters, I'll be more than willing to do the writing for. I just need to somehow get a model. More right, huh? Okay. All I've, right. heard about, I've heard about Octopath, but I don't really know anything about it. Let's just say Hanit will be an absolute torturous to write for her, because she speaks in Old English. <laughs> Standeth thou against me. Is this, is this Stripeth like, I is will. This like Frog from Chrono Trigger? I'm uh, not familiar with Chrono Trigger, unfortunately. But it's just everything's Old English. Well, Don't that makes one now. person who doesn't know it and, and Joe who hates it. I don't hate it. I just think it's overrated. You're overrated. You know, I'm okay with that because it means people are saying good things about me. That's the spirit. Uh, Morag, that's... You know? Oh, yeah. I might, um, I might be down for that. Maybe making a model at least. Of course. But, I like her hat. Spin that on. What about you? I was putting on out like a daily small up uh, dialogue updates for my characters for a while, and you know, unfortunately, I've just been a little busy in recent times. But yeah, still love working on the game. Still love updating all my characters. I'll be getting uh, back to that eventually. All right, floor is going to be gone for a, for like twenty seconds or something. I'm still here, so keep going. <laughs> Just the, from across the room. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just uh, just more continuous updates. I really got to get like you know like stuff like Sakura and how how popular she is. I really need to get all my characters to target, um, you know, her turning into a zombie actually, and just all the gimmicks that characters in the past year have really done. You know, I you know it's uh, Ryuko slowed me down on that. You know, updating Maya's and Jura's art and uh, Revy's epilogue slowed me down on that. And now I'm busy with other stuff in real life. But, you know, I'm going to keep plugging away at it. So that's really just the plan coming up. Love being here. Love putting out updates. Love uh, love interacting with other characters and other creators. Uh, Namas just said that, like, <laughs> Maya's and Nami's uh, interactions were a lot of fun. That's that's the one where Maya just <laughs> tells her about, like, how Dumps sad on her. Yeah, dunks on her tech. just to do what she's always dreamed of in a trivial, a trivial amount of time, shit like that. And that's that's uh, what I that's what I love about the game's uh, targeting interactions. You know, all the all the weird crossover conversations. They're very fun. Um, my projects have largely stayed the same, with the exception of. Uh, me inheriting Ochako with alongside Halo from Enmas. Yeah, because he's just uh, come to the conclusion that any line that he writes for Marinette can go to Ochako and vice versa. 
So he had to pick one of his children to uh, love, and the other one to toss into the woods to feed to the wolves. And Halo and I are the wolves. But this metaphor doesn't work out. Um, so yeah, Halo and I are taking custody of Oshiko. He's already made a fucking amazing model. It's like, like really blows your socks off with how good it is. I'll edit it in right now. Um, it's really making me wish that I just had him update May and Jura's models. Well, May and Jura a better a better job than me. Well, like what 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 do you want? The May and Jura models are great. They're not one to one. So do you want to give them the weird feet? Is that your goal? They're they're perfectly fine. Don't fucking insult Maya's feet. <laughs> Am I wrong though? I mean, anyway, my, my main focus was like their hair. Yeah, it looks great. And and, and Maya's outfit. Okay, I've got I've got the Ochiko model. Let me just post or paste it right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's really something. You're telling me. Yeah. Fucking great. Hill is great. Really is. Even if oh. the the calf and knee parts kind of look like fat penises. <laughs> Just, just ready to jizz all over her belly. I'm, I'm not, I'm not against that. Anyway, uh, that's my project. Still, still same, but we've adopted Ochiko now. Um, so that that probably puts Dante on hold for a little bit while we work on that, and then uh, if Cog so desires, I will help with. Alma, because I've already got a model. So, Ochiko, page one, next resort. <laughs> right? Mm, maybe. She's, She's already doing this well with the with the old one, so... Yeah. Uh, okay. With that out of the way, it's time for questions and answers. Question one. Say I intend on making what qualifies as an original character. What are your guys' recommendations on how to make it come out better, go smoother, not be regarded as total fucking garbage, etc.? Cog, why don't you start? So I think the main thing that sets apart an OC from a defined character is the audience that plays Spadani has no idea what their world is like, so you have to pretty much entirely establish who they are, what they're deal is entirely in their dialogue within a single game. And I feel like that's the biggest thing to, is to establish them as a character that people want to care for in a game like this. And that's pretty much all I have to say on it. All righty. Floor, what about you? Doing an original character means you're at a disadvantage because you can't really uh, give the put the voice across too much. You know, if you read uh, if you do any of these other characters, you're easy to read their lines and their voice. So you really kind of have to do a good job at establishing the voice of the character, getting into the emotions and the expressions of the character without having a canon voice actor or voice actors to go off of. Um, and then exactly what Cog said, you have to explain their world a little bit better than you normally would. Uh, a good description will help, and really get across, uh, you know, where they're coming from, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, all most right. importantly is the voice. Alrighty, Banana, what about you? So yeah, introducing the character, uh, helping the player quickly understand what they're all about, definitely important stuff. Um. I think even compared to an obscure character, you definitely have a hill to climb because, you know, even with an obscure character, you can, a player can just be like, oh, that's it, neat. I'm going to Google what their source is and learn more about them, which the original character you can't do. So really, 
you know, first off, ask yourself, is there a really popular character that sort of shares my OC's niche or personality? If if so, maybe just pick that popular character. I know you're super excited about your OC, but, you know, think about long term success here. Um, other than that, I think the way you really make yourself known is the, like there there are even with over 200 characters and 100 in the main game. There, there are still some underrepresented like niches and, and fetishes and, and just general player appeals thing, things that you can that you can try to target. You know, like how, how many MILFs do we have? Any? Uh, Slonico and Jesse. I think Kelly got fine. Yeah, I guess. So there's that. So basically, like, yeah. Like, that's the kind of thing where if you made, like, a really strong, like, milfy sort of OC who had a personality of her own and wasn't just, like, reacting to other characters, but also had, like, just this really, like, something that could really draw players in that because it's a porn game and they're looking for something that isn't there. You now, that's the perfect way to get your foot in the door, I think. Is to just, you know, just pick some kind of underrepresented appeal and, and just go go for that hard. So I I agree with what Spinalon says. Uh, have have any of you guys ever played on Pokemon Showdown? Yeah, a little bit. I saw other people play it. Yeah, there, it twice. there there are like a couple of fake Pokemon on that that you can pick that have some like unique type advantage or type combinations and stats that aren't there for real Pokemon. And that's my good. that's my advice is um find a a niche that like if there's not a character find a niche that you enjoy or that you think you could write or that you think would be good or any of those. And that you don't really have that you, there's not a character and if there's not like a character that you care about from a canon source, or you don't feel comfortable writing a canon character for whatever reason, then I'd say go ahead and do that. But like, I don't think that anybody would be excited to see an OC that's like, oh, this is just a fucking Fire Emblem character, but not what from if, Fire Emblem, you the know? Benefit of Fire Emblem. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like we've got like a Angie. lot. We've got well, Angie's from like weird high school and uh, uh, AU. I, but like, uh, do we need another high fantasy elf uh, princess girl? Do we need more of those? I feel like we've got a lot of high fantasy. Uh, if princess. it caters to a specific fetish, then maybe you could pull it off. But we've got so many of those. So, well, so what I'm saying, Laura Shell for kind of having like the holy woman, like you're all degenerates kind of that, attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's high free. That's high fantasy, yes, but that's also completely different. Um, what I mean, I is think like, you're being. I think you're just giving a Fire Emblem character a pass. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing the opposite. I'm doing the opposite. I'm saying, uh, like, we've got a lot of characters. Like, if if you make a character that is just like. Just if you're gonna make an OC, right? I feel like uh, you should make them completely something unique that we haven't seen before, like, uh, or or just go all in on like making them unique uh, and not just oh, this character reminds me of X from Y. You know what I mean? Have I explained this properly, or am I just sending like a dumbass? You're good. All right. Um, I, I did have one more thing to add really quick. Um, this is my personal opinion, but since a lot of people don't know your OC, you know, the writing may be good, but they're not going to play it unless you draw them in with something. So I think having a really good model on display for them to look at, that's going to be, I think, key to pulling them in to play your character in the first place. And then you can keep them around with good writing. Well, how would you describe a good model, though? Because it's not like there's a way that they're supposed to look. 
you'll know. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, there's a there's bad models, but I mean, like a particularly good model. What would it be? Uh, um, I guess like Dorb is always really good at making OCs, and Odin is too. They're the guy. They're the ones that I. Halo made this really cool like space pirate dude who's like blue and stuff, and it looks really cool too. Did someone say space pirate and blue? Yeah, it was a guy. Shit. <laughs> sorry to lower your sorry to run your expectations. Um, you made a really cool uh, like space pirate looking dude. And that was a really cool looking OC. But like, when you're making an OC, you've really got, you've got the, you've got unlimited potential, dude. You can make whatever the fuck you want. So make it, make it something unique. Make it something memorable. Don't, don't, don't uh, try and avoid uh, default stuff. Is my suggestion because canon characters are almost never made with default stuff. So why should your characters be made with default stuff? Use some belts, use some ribbons, make them look interesting. That's my advice. Anyone else got anything to say? I like Maya. <laughs> Good thing to say. You, I'm glad you do. I want to squeeze her. All right. Next question is: Do you enjoy when resorts roll around, or do you find them stressful? Why, Cog? Why don't you start off? I find resorts incredibly stressful. Like I may not You're show it. You know exactly what's going to happen <laughs> the whole time, but not while it's leading up to that. I guess. Yeah, so. like in the. F- Days leading up to it, and like on the first day of polls sprang out, I just had this tension that rests me. Like most people who know me on the Discord, they know I'm very uh, self-critical about my characters, and I think that intensifies a lot during resort time, where I just start. Questioning every little thing about them. Yeah. I mean, it's fine to be self-critical, dude. It's what produces great stuff. I'm self-critical, too, where I... Sometimes I find it hard to even play a game with my girls because I'm just like, is that line good enough? Fuck, I need to change it. It's just all shit. How can anyone like this? Yeah, that's basically how I feel summed up. All it's right. okay to feel that way. Uh, Floor, I do believe this is your uh, first my resort. First re- you- yeah. Oh, yeah. It's my first resort. Um, you I get don't the have anyone in the main roster. What like before you have a horse in the race. Oh, yeah. No one in the main roster, so I have no skin in the game. Yet, somehow, I still feel stressed for other people, if that makes sense. Who? Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, have- it's kind of... It, it's entertaining at the same time to watch people, you know, freak out about it. But at the same time, like, ooh, I don't know. I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Thing is, you know, can, can, can I ask you a question? Go for it. Uh, so as somebody who has no character in the game as of yet, but you've got a character on testing from a franchise that is uh, that's pretty well represented in Spinati. Uh, what right. are your thoughts? What, what's it like? Just a little bit. Do you get worried, like, oh... I hope these guys don't do bad, because if they do bad, then Farge is going to get t- tied to them next resort. Do you get anything um, like that? I think I'm kind of the opposite, or I'm worried that I might pull them back. Oh, oh you'll be fine, dude. Oh, yeah. You'll be fine. Star- Tharja is great. It's, it's, it's oh, yeah. Tharja. Uh, Literally the most requested Fire oh, yeah. Emblem I was going to say, fortunately, I think I'm working with a good character that people like. And people are going to vote well regardless of how she is because I think she's a popular, well-requested character. Uh, but I, I do hope I, you know, I don't drop the torch. I hope I contribute rather than pull back once uh, yeah. the time comes. I feel that way all the time. On the other hand, though, there are some great creators. Out there. 
that are making the other characters like Florina. Where I know that I think my character will be in good hands even if I do average because of all these just great creators out there helping me up. Spinana, what about you? All right, so um, I think I think compared to Floor, <laughs> probably the complete opposite perspective. This is oh god, this is my how many resources has it been now? <laughs> I remember I I wasn't even aware that the first one that that resource happened or that the first one was uh, that I saw was coming up. Uh, that was that was back in February 2018. Mayo was um, in the process of sponsorship, I think. So she joined during it. So she just, she didn't get to participate in it. I didn't even know that those were things because we didn't have an FAQ back then because I wasn't there to write it. But, uh, so there, so there was that. So uh, yeah, I just kind of saw the first one happen kind of like Floor did. Um, then there was the, the May one, August, December, then the April one. And so, Oh, yeah, so this is the fifth one that I think my characters have been involved in. So pretty intense. Um, and but none of my characters, other than other than May and Jura, which is a franchise I put together basically. Uh, none of them, my none, none of my characters have franchise mates, so I've never had that um, anxiety that I guess you you and and Cog do too, where it's uh you have to also worry about. You know, are you holding back your franchise mates? Are your franchise mates holding back you? Because only May and Jura have done that. And I guess if the results hold, then May and Jura have, have changed the lead a few times because um, May outdid Jura in the first poll that they had together. And then Jura won like the last two. And I guess it'll be May again. <laughs> so we're just going back and forth. Um, but yeah. Um, I mean, obvi obviously, I'm, I speak from kind of a privileged position because my characters always do really well, and I'm eternally grateful for that, and I'm glad uh, people have responded to, to them and really like them. Uh, so, not terribly stressful. It's I just, I just, you, you, you wait so long for them to roll to roll around, like I said earlier, and then they're over so quickly. So I, I, I kind of just get this this sort of zen where I just wait for the results to wash over me. It's just like well, once once I put in the uh, the final poll um, uh, responses, I'm just like well, it's in the heavens now. It's out of my hands. <laughs> so it it doesn't bother me too much. Uh, I always like them, but I guess I don't have the the sources of anxiety that um, some other people do. Uh, for me, uh, like, I've, it's been a little different for me this time around. Uh, I've always felt rather confident going in to the resorts, and always walked away not feeling particularly satisfied with how my characters placed. Uh, this time around is different. This time around, after the Heroes update, um... I was like, well, this was this was the best I can do. If this fails, then fuck, I'm fucked. I'll probably just have to start over. Uh, I was fully prepared to just straight up uh, throw Rinka out and rebuild her from the ground up if I wasn't satisfied with how she performed this. I went in extremely nervous this time. And ironically, it's the only time I've come out feeling uh, content with how my characters have performed. Top 40 for all of them? That's pretty damn good. Uh, that's, perf that's like, perform that's outperforming, uh, like, 66% of the game. So, I'm very okay with that. Uh... Yeah, it's a little stressful. Wondering, like, uh, uh, am I gonna? Is it? Is it gonna be good? Am I gonna get the numbers I want? And I know that it's not always about the numbers, but like, you you want to see that people are voting for them. You want to see at least some. So it is stressful at times, but once all the stress is cleared up. 
and you and you see that you've got the results that you want, they feel good. And if you don't got the results you want, you're not quite there. It really does motivate you to like keep trying and keep trying to get better. And that is all I've got to say about that. It's it's always a. I get, I get, it's a, it's a little bit smaller of a casting a net, I guess you could say, in terms of reaching out to the larger player base, because only the more dedicated people that actually find and stick around in the subreddit are going to vote in them. But uh, you know, it's always good. I always look forward to seeing um, feedback from the player base at large. So there's that, and the anonymous feedback polls, and hopefully this Discord bot with the functionality with the feedback goes a long way. Agreed. All right. What is something you think you can do to improve on as a writer? Cog, why don't you start us off? I think one thing that I am particularly weak in as a writer is my ability to nail a character's voice. I've been what? criticized on it for my writing for Pitt. For Palutena and for Mahiru. I feel like I did a bit better writing Lara Shell and Coco, but I still feel like I should probably go back and maybe redo or add some more lines to those first three. Just because the player base and I myself aren't totally satisfied with it. Okay, uh, wait. The, the pit? Like, I, I, of, of, I am one of the ten people who played Kid Icarus Uprising. I thought you nailed it, dude. Like I said, I'm very self-critical. Like, even if it's good, I know it can be better. I'm All sorry, right. did you say that you feel like Pit's out of character? Not out of character, I just feel like he could be more in character, if that makes sense. Like, with what? Uh, just... That there are parts of your, his personality that you haven't shown off well enough, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel with Chiaki. Well, I, w I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my knowledge of Pitt's character is that, I don't know, he doesn't know how to read. <laughs> That's his greatest regret when he dies in Smash. All righty. Uh, yeah, that Palatina's guidance stuff, I'd love to see that for more characters. I'm definitely going to be iterating on that in the future. I uh, I used a few of my thousand lines to, uh, to, to get some of those. So, uh, what about you? Um, I think, you know, this, this game can be pretty demanding at some time with how you need to write. Um, you know, sometimes you need to be a little bit more sexual in your writing. Sometimes you need to be more in character. Sometimes you need to adapt them to the game. There's all different sorts of modes you need to look at while writing. So I'd say one of the things I kind of struggle with is blending that all in together. Or distributing it correctly across, you know, different dialogue lines. Um, I definitely realize some cases where I'm a little bit too sexual, and then some where I need to kind of emphasize that, and some where I kind of break character a little bit to adapt to the game. So it can be tricky to get that down. Um, other than that, I think Thar is an easy character to look at in Awakening and break away from and feel like you have the character. But once you look back at some of her supports with characters that aren't Robin, you can kind of realize that maybe you skipped over a few things. And so that's something I'm going back and doing is looking back through some of her other support conversations. And I'm realizing, oh, I didn't focus this much on this part of the character. All right. That's about it. Spanana, what about you? <laughs> I should probably rewatch uh, re Vandred at some point just to pick up on any details that. <laughs> about either of their characters that I just have been lost in my memory to, to time. When was the last whether, time you uh, watched it? Like, be four years ago at this point, I think. God damn. Um, 
I know Maya has has one line that's like, there's nothing I hate more than nosy people, <laughs> which is funny in a game where people are constantly asking about her, uh, about who the hell she is. And, you know, you can't just completely shoot them down because why would she even show up to a, a, a social poker game <laughs> and not talk about herself? So you have to stretch, you have to stretch character in, in that regard. Um, something I could improve on as, as a writer, probably, probably just timeliness. I think I, I used to have more of a reputation for targeting, um, new characters and new situations quickly. And now I've really fallen behind on that just, just because of, uh, you know, limited free time in real life. I, I'm always, uh, trying to like reply to incoming targeted lines instead. I, I guess you could make the argument that those are more important, but, uh, yeah, just, just being more proactive in general. You don't want to just sit there and wait for other people to target you. You want to you want to put yourself out there. And I am going to do that more and more. It's it's just a, uh, you know, juggling juggling uh being busier and having four characters now. Yeah. I know. I know that sounds rich to to you and and <laughs> Cog only four. I currently only upkeep on four. With the occasional Akko costs being added. I'm only about five characters I'm upkeeping right now. All right. Uh, my answer is... Uh, I, I, particularly with Chiaki, and probably, it's probably an issue with all my characters, is that I feel like I could make that... There's just, like, not sexual enough. And in this kind of game, that's kind of what people are looking for. So I feel like that's something I gotta feel less awkward doing. And hopefully that'll... Hopefully I get better at doing that. My... Well, again, dude, you just gotta, you gotta be like, what, would, what do you want your waifu to say to you? Mm. Well, probably probably just anything, really. I'm not a very picky <laughs> person. I'm content to just hang out. Anyway. Uh, Pick a vlog where you just hang out. <laughs> Alright. Next question is, uh, regarding the previous episode, you criticized Misaka for not talking about her source enough. Is it possible for a character to talk too much about their source? Cog, what I'm so soft. I definitely think it's possible. You see this a lot in the early days of the game. Like, if you look at Mayor Dunn, for example, pretty much half of their dialogue is just Pokemon puns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what you mean by, like, porn parody writing. So my answer is... Yes, it is possible. Here's my jigglypuffs. All right, Flora, what about you? What are your thoughts? Um, I absolutely agree. I think it is possible to talk too much about it. Uh, I think that you need to find the right balance between referencing the source material to appeal to the fans, but also not having that overtake the personality. You know, because you got to think what they'd actually do. They wouldn't be referencing their homeland. You know, every other line. Yeah. So just dial it back. That's what I'm doing right now with Thora. Is I have a few people say that I need to reference the source material much, so I'm putting more lines in there. But I know that I can't have her say every other line, oh, by the way, I come from a desert. That's why I don't dress properly. Have you, have you uh, had any throwaway lines? Uh, having her bring up any of the other shepherds? Uh, I think I have one part in there where I, re where I reference the shepherds. Um, that's I definitely something I'm looking back at, though. She's a th shepherd? No, that's the name of their group. No. Oh. Uh, I, I was going to say, like... does, does Star just share a profession with Moses? <laughs> I, I mean, they both... Star follow... parts the Red Sea, but instead they... of the Red Sea, it's just her thighs. They pen cheap in full armor. Uh, I feel like she could compare Kamina to Vike. <laughs> I feel, like that's a, I feel like that's a pretty apt comparison. 
I think there could also be a joke about Kellum somewhere in there. Who? Kellum, that'd be a good one. Who? Talk about a sixth player. <laughs> There's actually six people playing. <laughs> That's pretty fucking clever, actually. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Spinaton, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's possible for a character to say too much about the game? Hmm. You know, I often give the advice that you want to make sure every line is something that could only come out of your character's mouth. So I think a lot of it comes down to the approach is it's going to feel like they're talking about their source too much if it's like really ham fisted. If a lot of those are like more offhand comments and not just like directly talking about the source, but it's it's just more like um, certain ways of talking or like preconceptions about the game and how people should act that sort of come about because of who they are in their source. I think that um, is a lot more natural and it, it'll make them feel less like they're just like handing out brochures about their universe. <laughs> so really, I think it just comes down to a uh, sort of getting in your character's head more and trying to convey more like their unique perspective instead of just being like, I work for so-and-so and I have done this for X years. And uh, this is just like villain from source material, you know? Mm -hmm. Like whenever I think about like making like a really ham-fisted reference to something, my, my approach would often be to have them kind of think it to themselves almost, uh, almost instead of just stating it out loud. So then they, they, so they could then kind of laugh uh, to themselves about it. Like <laughs> I shouldn't really say something that ridiculous. But uh, like you still kind of get the message across. That's a pretty clever way of doing it. Uh, I will definitely agree. It's totally impossible for a character to say too much about their world uh, to the point where it will almost feel like they're not really reacting to something. Uh, like uh, example, if your character is going on like. I have one of Hanako's generic lines having her think about uh, if she'll be able to go and get some groceries after the game is over. Uh, but if that was... Uh, but if I, if I had that line on a higher priority than, say, Amy's gimmick, it would feel really out of place, you know? If she's just thinking about her own normal person world um, while... Uh, while that kind of stuff is going on, that wouldn't make sense. You get me? Yeah, I get you. So that's, that's my answer to that. The new work in progress. Missy wonders what fetishes of the player she can appeal to. Got any answers to that? Water sports. <laughs> Fucking cut down. No! Well... No. That would, that would be her area of expertise. <laughs> God damn it. Sometimes you, you throw on the hydro pump and it just comes out yellow. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> shut up. Imagine if so, like, someone modded a Pokemon game and that's all they changed, was they just made all the water particles <laughs> yellow. I feel, I feel worried because I feel like there's a possibility that that's a real thing that exists. Well, people have Moemon. You're not wrong. I've played Moemon, like the uh, the Emerald uh, ROM hack, and it, it was pretty cute. I did the Battle Frontier in Moemon. <laughs> How did that work out? Oh, I was emulating it, so I just save stated. Okay, yeah, that's that's totally justifiable. Because I like, I just wanted to go through it. It wasn't a matter of like, yeah, I'm going to actually beat it. <laughs> I was just fucking around and I wanted to see a bunch of different Pokemon in the Moemon style. <laughs> Alright, Cog. What, what, what's your answer to this question? I don't really know the context behind how she wonders this. But just from her design... 
It's it's because she wants to go on a date with player. Well, yeah. But just from her design, you could appeal to like the tan line fetish, the big girl, the the other type of water sports. Like, there's a lot you could do, but Missy herself isn't really a very fetish-heavy character. At least not typically, so it's kind of hard to say. Now, is this question asking what, in general, should she appeal to? Or is it literally just asking what are our fetishes? I don't know. I didn't ask it. (laughs) <laughs> uh floor what about you you heard my answer no oh. um <laughs> you're serious no no um i, I think the obvious answer hey, would be winter a already fetish. wet herself so you know misty <laughs> could just soak that swimsuit another way I, I i'm half serious about it um the obvious answer i think would be a swimsuit uh you know, it's run of the mill kind of you know milk toast but it's whatever uh, aside from that i agree it's kind of I don't know if I'd say a vague question, but there's no obvious answer, I think, outside a swimsuit. I mean, how many people, like... I forget what I was going to say. Never mind. (laughs) Maybe you could tie in closely related things, like uh, cheerleading, you know, related to swimsuit stuff. So, something like that. But Yeah. All right. Spanana, what about you? Honestly, like just the obvious answer, tw- tan line swimsuit, just just the general like swimmer's body, really lean and fit uh, style girl. That's all you really need to do. I don't know. She could throw out some stuff about, you know, like I, sw- I swim for this amount of hours every day. Look what it's done to my body. You know, how, how could I uh, handle you in bed or something like that? I don't think it needs to be more complicated complicated than that. Again, a a lot of dirty talk, I think, doesn't really have to be that fetishy in order to be effective. (sighs) Otherwise, you risk kind of, like, alienating someone who's not into that. Like, what if she only started talking about her feet and you just were not into that at all? So I don't know how that functionality would work because it's not like the player has a way to respond in terms of, like, what fetishes they would want. I think uh... Again, like this, I consider this a jerk-off instruction game, and that's the main fetish that it does. So just focus on that, and just just play up her angle of I have a I have a swimmer's body, and I'm really fit. And she's a redheaded tomboy. Like you're you're there, man. You've got it. You've struck gold. Stop mining for oil. It's already great. Uh, what's your opinions on collectibles? Do you plan on adding multiple collectibles to your character? Uh, Cog, why don't you start us off? I started a little bit early on when the concept was introduced, but I just found it sort of a hassle to make and tie into the dialogue, so I probably won't make a whole lot. And, yeah. Alrighty, Floor, what about you? I really like the concept of them. Uh, I remember the first thing I read about them said a ballpark is like 500 lines of dialogue equals one collectible that you should be putting in. Not should be putting in, but it's recommended. Um, I would like to keep up with that. Every 1,000 lines is two collectibles. Hopefully I can keep up. Uh, Biggest thing for me is, again, I have no talent in doing any of the artwork for it. So if I'm able... If someone gives me artwork or something to put as a collectible, I'd be more than willing to put it in as soon as I reach the threshold. What wood fire should I give you as a collectible? The one I have right now is a grimoire, her next book. Uh, Outside of that, if I get the uh, the winter costume, I can do her antlers. She'd probably give you her hair, baby. <laughs> That'd be a good one. That's That's something she'd do. Just be like, I, think I give in, you uh, my body, player. I think it's actually canon in the Fire Emblem Heroes manga that Sarge's daughter, Nor, gives the Sumner her swimsuit. Wait, is, uh, Nor gives the what? Uh, Nor gives the player her swimsuit. 
All right. That's the wrong. Nora's already super strong contender for best awakening girl. So I am I'm okay with that. What about you, Spinanon? I think um one collectible per five hundred lines is a little much. Honestly, like they're it I don't know. It it kind of serves to I I guess cheapen the effect of them a little bit if there's so many of them. I guess they're supposed to be like little achievements, but when they finally get implemented, I just feel like there's going to be a bunch of people. Like I don't, I don't really see the point in many achievements because there's going to be a ton of completionists out, out there. But this game is so RNG heavy that you could just be like, if I put in a, in a collectible for seeing Nay and Revy fighting, well, you could be sitting there forever, just clicking over and over and over and over and over again until it happens to go your way. So I don't consider that very fun. So I just kept them really simple. And just made them like you know win against this character, and it's really just supposed to be a little token of your progress, and that you've uh, tried the character out. Uh, so that's that's my opinion opinion on them. That I, I think they they make for nice little extra notches besides an epilogue. I don't think they need to um, go the full way and be like this really exhaustive achievement list of seeing everything in the game, because I think. You really can't see everything in the game, considering how many different interactions there uh, interactions there are. Well, yeah, I agree. Uh, and but there's always going to be be people who will try to get all of them, and they're just kind of wasting their time. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think so, and so for those people, RNG. for those people, I think it's good that we have a little reward for them. You know, I am Even one of those people, and it would just frustrate me. Well, if you're going to be searching for those Easter eggs anyway, you might as well get a thing. But it's it. not something that you're actually achieving. You're just waiting for the dice roll to go your way. But wouldn't he, if you're okay, if you're waiting for the dice Same roll. Same thing as the Battle Frontier, by the way. <laughs> if you're waiting for the dice roll to go your way, why not get a little bit of an achievement for it? If you're going to be doing it anyway, right? Well, the fact the fact that it appears on a list means that now you're going to do that. You weren't going to do that before because there wasn't a list for you to look for. I guess. I guess I can see that argument. So I like uh, them at a basic level. I don't like them uh, getting overly specific. Um, the, there's the other question of sort of the mentality on what what kind of objects they should be. I know the Street Fighter girls have some that are like shots of them in alternate costumes, but I think Andres said that like he didn't want them to be that. He wanted them to be like actual objects, which means most of them wouldn't really be that sexual in nature. I mean, they can be a photo. I guess so. But that's a little like, then everybody would just have a photo of them <laughs> in an alt costume. Um, I mean, I think... For the most part, that's fine. I don't think they really need to be sexual in nature because you have epilogues for that. But it's it's just a matter of like we're they've been around for a while, but they they still really haven't been fully implemented because I think people are just like still haven't quite agreed upon what we want them to be. And a uh, discussion on them has on it has kind of gone cold. Hopefully, this podcast episode can revive it a little bit so we have a better idea. Alrighty. Uh, my opinion is that they're okay. Like, I'm not gonna waste, I'm not gonna spend too much energy or time or trying to come up with an idea and then create it. In, okay? Unless it's like a, oh, I've gotta make sure my character gives them that. I kind of gave all my characters a collectible just because I wanted them to have a collectible. Um, they all kind of made sense. Actually, no, Hanukkah doesn't have one yet, does she? Damn it. Um, I don't really plan on going overboard with them. I feel like what I've got for them now will be fine. Uh, maybe, maybe as I make more characters, I can have Dante give you 
a signed autograph of Dante from the Devil May Cry series or something silly like that. Uh, but I'm pretty content with how many collectibles my characters have now. What is your favorite genre of music, and what genre of music each character you developed be into? Ah, uh, why don't you start us off? I'll admit, I'm not the biggest music guy. I mostly listen to, like, video game soundtracks when I want to listen to music. So, my knowledge on this is kind of not that great. But I think if I were to choose a genre for each of my characters, I'd say Mia would be into classical music. I'd say Palutena would be in. Mia is so classical that she died because a classic statue fell on her head. It didn't fall on her head. It Someone whacked her with it. Yeah. I'd say Palutena would be into orchestral music. Yeah. Oh. Isn't, isn't that kind of the same thing? No. Classical is more... When I think classical, I think lots of pianos. When I think orchestral, I think lots of organs. I mean, it's just, they're all just traditional instruments, right? I guess you don't need a whole orchestra to play classical music, but generally that's how it's recorded, right? <laughs> and written. Disclaimer, I'm not a music expert. Last time I took any kind of music theory was like fifth grade. Well, moving on, I'd say... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that sparked discussion. This kind I'm, of to- I'm tone deaf. It's so like... My musical uh, insight is very, very limited. I've already said I'm not a big music guy. I'd say Pitt would probably into... Uh, Baroque music. I'd say Mahiru would probably be into like folk or country music. And then I'd say Larshell would probably be into reggae. <laughs> and then Coco would probably be into punk rock. Coco is into her own theme song. She has that on her on her phone, and this is exactly. Repeat. All right, Flora, what about you? Uh, my music tastes are a little bit out there. Uh, my genre of choice is symphonic metal, or uh, sometimes referred to as gothic metal. It's a similar genre. Basically, metal music plus all the symphonies and orchestras and choirs and all of that. Not to say that Evanescence is similar. But to someone unfamiliar, the closest thing I could bring up is Evanescence. Wake me <laughs> up! Wake <laughs> Oh my god, you are tone deaf. I told it, you. It is. <laughs> it wasn't even close. <laughs> it, is, it is of my opinion that Evanescence is a very poor representative of the not genre. Because <laughs> Evanescence is like alternative rock and not even symphonic metal at all. But people want to call it that because they don't know what symphonic metal is. Anyway, so, so Tharja would unironically listen to Wake Me Up and stuff. So. I I think she would have similar tastes in me, which or is not Tharja Evanescence. Would bring me to life. I think I think Thar would be into a uh, gothic music like I am, gothic metal. Uh, some Lacuna Coil might so be her she, thing. She wouldn't do mainstream. No, nah. I mean she might. I don't know. If she might be that if, way. If that's what the player liked. Yeah, yeah. She, she'll <laughs> pretend to listen to whatever the player likes. <laughs> whatever whatever you want to bang to <laughs> she'll put it on even if it's like banana phone alright banana what about you all four of my girls are pretty much the uh, the female leads of their respective shows so I'd say it, it pretty much would fall in line with just whatever the, the main uh, musical style of, the, of their soundtracks are uh Ryuko, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what you would call the the general style of of Kill la Kill. It's kind of eclectic. I mean, I mean, certain characters have their own themes. What would you even call like Ryuko's theme specifically? Just uh, uh before my body stray. I guess so. 
So yeah, I mean, she's kind of punkish. So she probably wouldn't go for like standard like J pop. You know, probably a little, you know, some some of the the rap elements there. Uh or just, you know, just general weird eclectic, you know, techno pop that sort of thing. Or uh I, know, I guess King it's hard to say. For, circulate. I guess it's hard to say for for Ryuko. But Revy's pretty easy because she literally like puts on like shit on her Walkman <laughs> in the in the show and and like blast death metal and says she loved uh, she loves guitar wolf. Um, she, I mean, I gave her a prompt marker about how, oh. like, what order, uh, what favorite, what her favorite music is, and uh, asking everybody else. Maya and Jura, uh, it's kind of hard to say, but the thing is, like, they they're from like a future where like humanity is spread out all across the the galaxy and colonized planets. So, I figured classical because that uh, you know classical orchestral stuff is. First of all, it's it's basically what Vandred's soundtrack uh, sounds like. They, it's basically a space opera, and if you think about it, uh, in a future like that, that like really you know traditional classical music that we listen to even now that was written hundreds of years of years ago, that's the kind of stuff that would survive today and still be popular. You know, hundreds of years from now, kind of like Star Trek, how like Picard still listens to to classical music and reads Shakespeare, you know. Like something like that would still be around because it's like humanity's legacy, basically. So I would expect that. Just a classical music. Okay. What about Remy? I said that already. Did you? What was it? You did. Just I like missed metal. it. Oh, okay. I missed that one. Just blasting that shit. Okay, but did you answer what your favorite John was? Oh, were we supposed to do that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I have, I have a pretty eclectic mix too. I, I have a pretty healthy mix of like stuff from from anime and video games and and stuff that like normal people would actually consider music, like from bands. I don't know. Um, I ha- I had like some stoner friends in high school that were into like dad rock. <laughs> so oh like, god, that's me. Classic rock from like the sixties and seventies. So that I kind of got some of that from like Osmosis. That's super me. Uh, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me to really, really pin down stuff. It's more just like I find random uh, songs or bands that I like, and I just sort of absorb them in. I'm similar. I also enjoy a lot of classic rock uh, and video games slash anime soundtracks. Uh, besides that, I guess power metal is my favorite. As yeah, for my care, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go. As for my characters, I assume Hanukkah would listen to classical stuff. Uh, Rinka, probably some, probably stuff with a lot of drums, is what I imagine they have at the Flame Tribe. Uh, or whatever Azura sings. Uh, Chiaki, I imagine, is completely soundtrack, 100% of the way. And Kamino's rap, obviously, because rap is a man's soul. That's that's the name of the theme song. Can you can you post like some kind of comedy edit of the of that one gif where it's just like I'm about to end this man's whole career? That, I that will, rap battle. I don't have that on me, but I'll absolutely make that and edit that into the video. <laughs> that one that one video has like spawned so many memes, and I don't know the names of anybody. I know, um, yeah, I know the exact one. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> Especially that one guy that just like makes a face and like uh, <laughs> runs across. Falls over. Him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know the exact gift you're talking about. <laughs> All right. He just kind of like trust falls back into like his posse <laughs> when he's done. Uh, All right. Which is the best incomplete character? Cog, why don't you start us off? No character is, is complete. I think save, save the philosophies for later, Spinana. I'd say, in my opinion, the best incomplete characters, or like the characters who are classified as incomplete in the offline version of the game, would either have to be Captain America or Vriska. Like, both of them just ooze quality. 
And it's a yeah, shame. God, I agree. It's a shame neither of them were ever completed. Although it does look like Captain America is seeing some more progress these days. Captain America has just had basically the longest continuous development out of anybody. Zeus is not going to settle until every pixel of Captain America is made custom. How much more handsome can he get? He even he even like custom made like balls that hang properly. So they yeah. look like weird Kisuke balls that are always like tied up against <laughs> up against your, your groin. He made me realize how weird that normal Kisuke dicks look and how they're like up too high. Kisuke was just not made for men. But that has not stopped Zeus. All right. Floor, what about you? I think a lot of this question kind of depends on what you consider incomplete. Uh, if we look at the more offline characters, I can't remember exactly which ones are offline. But I would like to see the old Misty, um, Lilith from Borderlands, and Kim Possible. I think they all uh, they had something going that I liked. Maybe it's just because you know, like the characters in general. But it's it's a shame to see them. Uh, they weren't fleshed out more. Uh, especially Lilith. I'm looking at her, and she only has like 190 lines. I mean, the character model better. looks fine. She What's was up? one of the very first characters in the game. She's not technically incomplete. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to see her get more lines at least. Actually, I think Lila, Lila, no, no, no. Lara was the very first. I mean, I mean Lara... four of them, they kind of released simultaneously, but. That's about it. <laughs> Kim, Lilith, and Mystia. They're at least the ones I want to see more lines for. All of those are technically not incomplete. <laughs> I, I, you need to lower your standards. I fully admit it. The, the definition of incomplete escapes me. Incomplete means that they died <laughs> on testing. I know what it means. Okay, okay. It has no, it has no bearing on their actual quality. It just I means that they died on testing. I feel like they're... Like, you haven't been around for long enough to, oh, yeah. to know not a, a lot of the characters oh, that yeah. died on testing. No, I, I don't have a list of characters that, uh, you know, fit that description. Um, you know, weren't around for that long. Those are the characters, though, that I'd like to see fleshed out more that aren't currently. Do my own take on the question. Uh, Spinana, what about you? I was originally going to say Vriska, but yeah, I'm glad you reminded me about... I'm glad Cog reminded me of Captain America. Those are two... They came out. They came out pretty close to each other, both in early 2018, and they're basically examples of characters that technically they are incomplete because they died on testing, but they could have very easily released in a pretty decent state. And it's honestly, I think it's a shame where uh, you know you really just like there's nothing wrong with just pulling the trigger and just iterating on them in the main game. Like I did that a long time ago with Maya, and I've still updated her to the point where she's a pretty different character at this point compared to when when she released at least in my opinion you know in terms of model and uh, the voice i've given her i've i've rewatched some of van dread and i i made her like a lot less sarcastic and sort of biting and and a lot more uh stoic and professional i think but yeah like those are examples of perfectly good characters like Zeus could have just kept, just could have released Captain America in that state and he'd be great and just made all these updates to him with him in the game. And I think he, he lost out on a lot of feedback and praise by doing that, honestly. Like, if you're listening, man, just go for it. You can update them in the game. It's nothing wrong. And, and it'll, uh, it'll just give people something to actually play, uh, play with. I will agree on uh, on Captain America. I didn't really play Vriska enough to to, to get that attached to her. Um, I will agree that Captain America is, is super good. Uh, I also think that like either of the Alice's are pretty good, both Purple and Snake. I'm really disappointed that Snake Alice is never going to be finished. Oh yeah, Perlin just said that he 
What, he, he didn't have the time for it? Yeah. That's a shame. She's another yeah. good one. She had a lot of potential. I was looking forward to her. All right. Next question is, what is something you've been struggling with development-wise recently? Addiction. Opium. Oh, wait. I said development-wise. Scratch that. Edit that out. No. Cog, why don't you start us off? I think my main thing recently has been just getting all my bets in a row. But I have a bunch of things I need to do for my characters and future projects. But I just need to like sit down and organize what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, what priority I need to give each task. And I just haven't had the time recently to do that. So I'm just kind of stuck thinking what should I do next. All right. So what are you thinking of doing next? Uh, one thing that I think I'm going to do is I've been asking around and trying to get some joint poses going. I've had a couple takers on that, but, well, they have yet to be integrated, so those will probably come sometime next week or so, but we'll see where it goes. All righty. Uh, Floor, what about you? I think one of the things I'm struggling with, uh, this being my first time around the block, I'm still kind of getting used to some of the uh, intricacies of the character editor. Uh, really kind of getting down how all the priorities will come together, how you know certain default priorities will work, um, and just making sure that each line is able to be played in some way, shape, or form, and recognizing the probabilities that each. There are some that uh, like they react differently for medium, small, and you know, large chess and all that, but I have in any category that will be playing no matter what. And it's just getting down, working out what the probabilities are, working out which lines will always be played versus which ones require conditions and how I balance it all. And I'm, I'm sure I'll get better with it uh, after some, some more experience, but that's about it. All right. So now what about you? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, just, just free time. You know, I love putting out updates, love working on the game. Uh, I don't think I've ever lost my momentum for any um, specific amount of time, but it's just, a, you know, real life responsibilities getting in the way and uh, having to manage my time and, uh, and going through, you know, personal changes and all that. But uh, not, nothing too serious. Just got to learn to manage time better. That happens to all of us. But, you know, definitely still love being here. Love working on the game. And I'm going to continue wherever I can. For me, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a big time investment. So yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn how to handle things. You're never finished really. No. And the more characters you start, the, the deeper hole time wise you sink into. Watch me just drill my way to the earth's core. How many characters do you have lined up? Uh, six more. Six more. You don't sound very sure. Uh, well, there's uh, Dante, Janetta, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield protagonist, Gundam Tanaka, Ochiko, Alma. Maybe. Well, that's about six more. You can do it. Yeah. They're all characters that I like well enough that I can probably keep going. It's just like, God, I really need to win the lottery. <laughs> deal with this. <laughs> deal with the, the income situation. Just focus on Spinati. It's like, what are you, what are you going to do with your, with your millions of winnings, sir? I'm going to work on an anime titty game for the rest of my days. In my mansion. Yeah. 
That's what you do. That's what you do. Put it away in some kind of hedge fund and just, just roll. It's like we got it made, sir. Know what I want to do with my life. Um, for me, my uh, thing I was, I've just been like, like I said before studying the resort after after the heroes left it, I was super nervous about like. Uh, working on my characters, I'm just like, what if it's just for nothing? What if it's just go- not going anywhere? Um, but I'm pretty happy with how they've placed, and I imagine that'll be alleviating a lot of the worries, so I'll probably be able to get back to updating my characters soon enough. Alright, next question is, who's your favorite joke character? Why? Cog, why don't you start? Hmm, Wow. I just said I was happy with them as well. Oof. Um, Who's this okay. fucking Fire Emblem D-lister? What's she doing in my game? You're not wrong. She's exactly that. She's not even not even loved enough to get into the gotcha game. Hey, even Vandred made it made it into the the shitty mobile version of Super Robot Wars. Yeah, at least you've got that. <laughs> um. Sakog, what's your uh what's your answer? My answer is A eighty six actually, the card. <laughs> I forgot I made that actually. Like he's or it's just so out there it basically underflows from the unfunny factor into the funny. And it actually has a reason for it to have such a low line count since it's just blaring songs the whole time. And the its final stage where it just drives off is just fine to me. So, I'm, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad that you uh, enjoy it. Fuck, I should go back and like make it do some sick flips next year. All right. Floor, what about you? I hate all joke characters equally. Um, <laughs> I think the best memes, the best meme was the car, so good job on you. And the other best meme was Kool-Aid Man, and how each one of his stages is a different meme. So you Look hate the, the joke characters? Uh, I just don't play with them. I mean, I don't care if they're oh, in the game. Why would they you? Had some... <laughs> why would you have that once? That's the point. <laughs> I, I think Kool-Aid Man it, it had eight memes in one so I think it has to win by default alrighty Banana what about you my first thought was Gay Spaghetti Chef and I have to keep reminding myself that he is in fact not a joke character <laughs> Which he's very serious I think about that every, every so often and then I just have to I have to sit down for a bit. I don't know. The car the car A eighty six is pretty good. Honestly. Uh playing a different song, nice and simple. Uh the way it just kind of drives around all nonchalant. Second only to nine S in uh in uh alphabetical order. And he has a grand total of four images. Oh yeah, one of them, one of which is gone. So the blank one. What are the others? God, default Chan. That's kind of funny. Oh wow, she has like four poses per stage. I don't know. I I don't have a definite answer because I I just kept. Oh, no, I do, Mister Clean. <laughs> because bald is beautiful. Yeah. Uh. Not only, get... that, not only that, but he has he has a tastefully normal sized penis, despite being a joke character, which is it, which is a level of restraint that Dranky could only dream of. Uh, my favorite joke character is uh, Show Tucker because he flosses, and I think that's great. 
Remember, that's how Ferris got the purple name. That, that's his contri- contribution to the game. It's more than some people. And it's yeah. perfectly fitting. It's, it's more than me, honestly. Um, let's see. Would you rather have a character have groundbreaking art or writing? Cog, what about you? I'm more into the game for the dialogue, so... I'm, so, if I had to choose, I'd rather have a character with groundbreaking writing and average art than amazing art and just okay writing or art. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have a character with great writing and average art there. All righty. Floor, what about you? I think the question in large boils down to if you're more of a casual player, you know, just tunes in the game every once in a while versus if you're, you know, more into it, more in depth and all of that. A more casual person is going to want better artwork, I would imagine. And someone who's more dedicated wants better writing. Uh, I personally think I would be dedicated enough. I mean, I'm writing for the game, in fact, to care about the writing and appreciate the writing a little bit more. Uh, so it, it mostly depends on who you are, but my personal answer would I think be writing. Spanana, what about you? How how can you really get groundbreaking writing at this point? I don't know. First it was Moon, and then it was Pit, and then it was Maya. Do I have to remind you that Maya came before Pit? Yeah. This irks me. They were really pretty close to each other. Like a few a few months apart, I guess. Or, or yeah, a I month think or two. May it came out in like January and it came out in like March. Huh. I think yeah. Yeah. That was a pretty slow period for the game overall. Like there was maybe like a couple of releases a month, if that. Although the lasting effects those characters had can definitely be felt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, like what? Just what would it be at this point? Like we have characters that pretty much target everything. Um, we have characters that have like really, you, uh, excuse me, really unique like uh, marker marker chains that kind of like take their dialogue in different directions, like, like Farja swapping outfits and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering what's left to really breach, other than just going in really hard on some kind of specific um, functionality. Like recent functionality that none of us have really engaged with yet, like yeah. some of the the advanced like detecting like where they are where they stand in the game and like what people have taken off and what day it is and what background it is. You yeah, just so keep like, multi- you just keep stacking up variables on people. So if there's like hyper aware characters, I guess. That's it. Everybody wants to see the player character. That's it. We just make player chan and have them target every single possible value. They use every single feature. Yeah, and every single possible combination of them. Yeah, so... I wonder what the exact number is. Do the count, yeah, Joe. You can make it happen. No, uh, I can. You can do it. I believe in you. Uh, I... I definitely make no promises to get that number by the time this episode goes up. But you know what? I'll start. You already let me down last podcast by uh, refusing to take the ultimate challenge and consume every source material represented in Spinetti. I, uh, I, I was out of town for a con, and then I came back, and then I had school, and now I've got work. I just don't have the time to spin in on. Excuses, excuses. You got any more for me, Joe? Uh, no, but I do have an answer to the question. I mean, well, I, I, I'm still wondering. Uh, groundbreaking writing would probably probably be more impressive as a dev. Well, no, groundbreak. I mean, the most groundbreaking art you can get at this point is if you're just an artist, like Horse Cat, and you just draw something that looks amazing, and that's already happened. So you know, characters can keep getting better and better art, and 
you know, I think it kind of comes down to whether I think the character is particularly particularly hot and someone I want to play with all the time. So yeah, I'd I'd love to see like some really some really sexy art from them. But uh, you know, I could appreciate writing too. So I guess I'd go for writing if I don't find the character all that attractive, because then I could still appreciate them in another way. So I guess it depends on the character. I'm going to put my answer as revolutionary dialogue, just because I'm interested in seeing how somebody could revolutionize dialogue. We get a... We've gotten plenty of characters with crazy art that changes. Like, we get Bagel's models, we got Halo's models, we got Mouse's models. We got tons of crazy, amazing models out there. Uh, so, like, the, it, at least in models, like, the stakes are constantly being raised. And we got, like, Pat going out there getting Moyashi models. I'd like to see somebody... I'd like to see what revolutionizing dialogue would look like. So, I'm pretty much picking that just out of curiosity. Uh, mostly. Wow, this episode has almost gone for three Isn't that crazy? No. I blame the resort. It? Well, rem remember that Cog read uh, off detailed yeah. resort results for 40 minutes. That'd do it. That'd do it. <laughs> I was wondering. Banter, otherwise, I think we're all a little tired. Yeah, it's been a long week. You're telling uh, me. Two questions left. What's the policy for starting work on characters that someone else has already uh, has ar ha somebody else already has we'll get, progress we'll get on? Eventually. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I want to write a very popular character from Konosuba, but I've heard somebody else is working on them already. Well, we do have a mod on the podcast. Would you please explain what the policy is? So the thing is, nobody really has a stake on a particular character. It's mostly just on a first-come, first-served basis. But what I can recommend is that if you know someone is already working on that character, I'd suggest you reach out to them and see if you can collaborate. And that way you can both get the character done and both get credit for it. All right, Floor, what about you? What would, what would you do if, if, if you, were, you were working on a character that somebody else was, wanted to work on? I don't think I'm qualified to state what the policy is, but I think what the policy should be is, you know, just like what he said, reach out to them first. Um, if you can collaborate with them, that's the best situation. Um, you know, maybe they're in it for the artwork or something and aren't really confident in the writing and you can pick, up that, pick that up for them. Uh, that should be your go-to. Um, other than that, maybe you might want to work on a reskin for them. You know, say, hey, I want to do an, a winter alt for them or whatever it is. Um, don't, you don't have to abandon the possibility of working with them. Just try to see how you can supplement the character, I would say. All right. For now, what about you? I'm still waiting for that watershed moment where we actually have like two active authors trying to work on the same character independently and both pushing them to the game and, and seeing what the uh, the result is. We still have no I mean all those all the all of Spinati, Spinati's rules are pretty much forged in the fires of someone challenging the status quo. So, we'll eventually have to come up for a for a rule there if it ever ends up happening. But yeah, just uh, just first come, first serve. Just make it happen before before they do. Like the thing is, like you might see someone like having made progress on something, but it takes forever. So if you have more free time to to try and do it, go ahead. Alternatively, you can be a friend and a team player and just try to help them, uh, try to help them with it. Unless you really think they're going to do a shitty job for some reason, you might as well just uh, collaborate. Uh, yeah. I 100% agree. I know that it, this person who's asking about a Konosuba character, if they're asking about Mega Man because that's the only one that's in development. And Masp is is just waiting. I'm pretty sure Masp is just waiting for art. Like I think that the lines are already there. So it, I I am like 99% sure 
I'm sure that if you just asked him, you could absolutely get this, get Megumin in, in the game, but within a week. Uh, if, if you're ever interested in working on a character that I've, that I'm working on, go ahead, message me. We can make this a collab. Unless you don't want to do that for some reason. Um, in which case, that's fine. You're, uh, there's totally allowed to be two of the same character in the game. We got two Misty's in the game. For now. Um, but yeah, like Spinalon said, first come, first serve basis. So, uh, just get it done. And Cog, being an actual mod, has explained the policy. Final. It's, it's convenient this time around, isn't it? Having an actual mod around to talk. We we almost always have a mod on the episodes that go up around resource time. Do we? I think so. I feel like we had an mask on. Last. That's true. We have vision on a lot. We have we have Cog on a lot in the mask. Orange rest we've only had once. You need to get uh. in there. Pat is afraid that his public image will be ruined, apparently. Mm -hmm. He's never been on. Just do a voice changer, man. Just yeah. like, you know, make it happen. He, he's already expressed that it's not for him. Although he does listen to every episode. Hi, Pat. Shout out it's, to It's Pat. weird, because he's like a super positive guy. Yeah, he's really I cool. I think he'd, he'd want to talk to us. Oh! Just <laughs> my mic. Oh, fuck, he died. died. All right, it's time for us to end. To, I'll do the last question. Since, Wait. Did, before, did we, before we bury... Joe. No, my um, I just moved my mic a little. He's dead. Okay. F in chat. Uh, do you think the resort can go back to popularity? Samus and Moon aren't registering as highly, and it feels like the mod and few other authors dominate the front page, even over highly acclaimed characters. <laughs> God, why don't you start us off? I just pinged everyone in the podcast server. <laughs> uh, Cog, why don't you uh, send us off? Do you think that the, that the report will ever go do that? I made you a mod. Do you think that, uh... As, Cog, as a mod, will it ever go back to pure vote? Right, so the thing is... I if you feel targeted because Cog literally read the <laughs> the results. My characters are near the top. So this isn't very like public info, but if you were to compare the like pure popularity votes to the adjusted votes, you would find that they are pretty very much close in count, with only like a few slight deviations with like Spinanon's characters and like Pit and Misato and stuff. So, if, so there's really not any real point to going back to popularity. Like, all it does is hurt those characters who have had the extra mile put into it. I mean, with the with the diminishing returns that the the switch to log to, to logarithms has really put into the um the line count formula they're re like all it's really changing is the effects of like some of the characters near the absolute top again otherwise they they line up pretty close like may and jura like i'm i'm really happy with how they do and obviously they get on or near the front page but it's like otherwise they'd just be like around what like the the six to like 26 range in terms of votes. <laughs> so it's, it's not that much of a difference, especially now with the scrolling character select. All right. Um, my answer is like Samus and Moon aren't good, bruh. Like I feel like well, the they're also not as popular as any of those characters anymore. Yeah, like 
even in play statistics. Well, some of them kind of, they're a little higher in play statistics, but. Also, I feel like Spinano has brought up this point uh, before in that like, Samus' star power gets her by so much easier than like his work on Maya does. Like, an, a mediocre, like, a mediocre Samus would run circles around a good Maya if Spinanon didn't do as much work as he did in terms of ro- a vote count. Because that's just Samus. She's the waifu. It doesn't matter how you write her. She's going to get votes. Well, it's more like any given amount of work on Samus just means a lot more than it would on, on like a character like Maya. Yeah, because she's she's the bare bones uh, baby's first waifu character. Like, people are going to vote Samus no matter how you write. And so, uh, I feel like we should be re- rewarding uh, not only like the, the effort put into a character, like ten thousand ri- lines of dialogue, uh, versus six hundred of Samus's lines that you could give to whatever seasonal life, like Bowsette or whatever. I, I feel like it would be just it leave a bad taste in my mouth of that if, if Samus went out over that. And that mood is weird. I don't like Moon. And I don't... I want her to be offline by the time I'm ready to put uh, the Sword and Shield protagonist in the game. Assuming oh, that oh I... you're making the boy? Huh? You're making the boy? Sword, Chan? Sword and Shield's protagonist. <laughs> SNS. Protagonist. Assuming that I'm... Uh, assuming that they are an uh, uh, el- eligible character. Pokemon SS, set in Britain. It's Hex's life story. Yeah. So, that's all the questions for this podcast. Uh, thank you, uh, Spananon, for being my co-host as usual. Oh, is this a farewell? Am I, am I being forced out by management? <laughs> I mean, we've answered all the questions. Have am, am I the GM being fired by the owner? We're co-owners, Banana. Oh, isn't that sweet? I make you do all the work, though. Hmm. Well, it, it, it wouldn't quite be the same if I was co-hosting a that, yeah. Well, I definitely say it's a it's a it's a good thing for this podcast episode that we got a mod on, even though his his uh, day early research results are not going to be as interesting to the people who listen to this, since they will have a, have the actual votes by then. I the mean, they'll, they'll they'll get it here our live. Re- that's content, baby. I know that's. I don't. know. That's like a. I should have something snappier. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like a live stream. It's it's live reacts. It's live reacts where people just watch an, an episode of a new anime, and the, whenever something happens, they just go, "Oh damn!" <laughs> and that's the entire fucking video. All right, uh, Cog. Thank you for being on the uh, episode for giving us insight into the resort. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, and Floor, thank you for being on this uh, episode. You've been a great guest. Absolute pleasure, man. Question. What's up? Why is your name Floor? All right, so. uh, Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, there's a story. Uh, Symphonic Metal Band, there's a singer. Uh, The band is Dutch, so they have Dutch names. And apparently the the name... What's the band? uh, Nightwish. Oh, I know them! Nightwish is Finnish. They did Ghost Love Score, right? Yes, they did. Dude, I have a live version of that song, which is to die for. Anyway, the new singer for Nightwish, she's a Dutch woman. Her name is Floor. 
uh, Floor Jansen. When I first heard that, I was like, there's no way Floor is a real name. Well, I looked up, and lo and behold, Oh, Floor they did Amaranth, is... too! Yeah, dude. Do, their, do, their, do we gotta talk more about this? <laughs> I fucking love Nightwish. Oh, they're amazing, dude. The, um, two, the two songs I know by them. Oh, yeah. Um, so, her name was Flora. I do, didn't think it was a real name. There's a real name. And I'm like, you know what? I think Flora is an... It, it, that, that's cool. I think it's cool that Dutch people call their children Flora. They own it. You know what? I just started liking it, so I did it. Power move. Dude, let's go. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for being on the episode, and uh, thank you for listening. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Maybe. <laughs> oh, Cog had to leave for a little bit. Yeah, as long as it doesn't fall in the wrong hands, nothing but positive. Yeah, I already enabled it for my characters. I Same. guess I, I guess who knows how much uh <coughs> people will actually use it. It'd be great if they did. I'd like to I'd like a steady trickle of feedback like that so we don't have to wait a whole year <laughs> for another anonymous feedback poll. We don't if you make them more often. Well then it's not as fun. <laughs> well, people's opinions won't change very much if I do it every month. You'll just be writing the same shit over and over. That's true. I have also enabled them for all my characters. I've made each of their feedback uh, messages unique. Alrighty. That out of the way, we will wait for COG to its upcoming projects. So... Edit what this out. I've got Astral Chain coming in the mail today. What's that? It's a video game for the Switch made by the guys that made Metal Gear Rising. Uh, Bayonetta 2, I think, or is that... Yeah, I th Platinum. Platinum. I think a ton uh, of good uh, games. Really quick, can you remind me what guest going over at Queen Projects is? Is that just like what we're planning on with our characters? Well, it's going to be... Uh, here's Cogback. It's going to be... Uh, our upcoming projects is what we plan on working on with the characters we've got and any upcoming characters that we're working on. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, shit, he's back. Yep. Yeah. All I right. Was get, I was getting all comfy, all ready for like uh, 30 minutes of bullshit. He said he'd be really? right back. Not back in a bit. I don't know what he means by that. So, Cog. Maybe he's like Frieza, and five minutes takes 20 episodes.